Can I just say something? When I saw the Walter Gretzky story with the memorabilia come up, my first thought was, I hope he didn't know a James Reimer mask because I definitely know who was responsible. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, Adam. This was someone with an extremely one-of-a-kind thing. Yes. Jesse, that, you, that is the dumbest, most bizarre story. <laughs> oh, music. There's the music. Um, is Jesse just drowning us out because we're terrible? Maybe. Is that what's happening? I don't know. Oh, there we go. There's the fader. <laughs> oh. There we go. <laughs> I think we did it. The most annoying beginning to a show. I, I couldn't get it to reset. <laughs> oh, okay. The, the fader. I was having a little trouble today. That's all right, man. Oh, you know, we're getting on the holidays. Who said that? Can we just be you honest? the way he said that? I want to give you a hug right now. But just wanna, no, just for, with the fucking faders. It's not. Even, <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't you want to cuddle up to that beard he's got going on though? It's, oh, it's nice, do. looking good, man. Yes. Mm. Um, Girl, he, uh, trying to compete with Santa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking like Santa today, man. Um, so the uh, the Walter Gretzky stuff is stuff we'll get to. But uh, I, Jesse, I don't know if you saw a couple of weeks ago, and I was going to bring it up, but I think it was the Burke Kiprio show. So it was or Burke, whoever we had on, we had a double guest that episode. Um, uh, the uh, the James Reimer mask that was up for twenty five hundred dollars. Wow, online. And people were sending it to Steve like, you should probably buy this. Now, Steve, because we didn't get to address it at the time, I want to know about this mask because I know you did the in-depth research. I know you dove deep and I know you considered this. I know that $2,500 is something that you would be like, well, I could skip a mortgage payment or several. So tell me, how several. close were you to making a bid on this James Reimer, Re Reimer mask? There was a more than 0% chance I was going to bid on this. <laughs> okay. That's not surprising at all. How, at 20, how high it, is the percentage? So it's oh, um, uh, very far off, but st I'm going to say five. There was a 5% 5 5%. chance. Mm. So one in, one in 20. Here's the thing with bids, Math. though, is that the, the, the price changes, sometimes even a dollar at the time. Well, so that would be so an issue for <laughs> Then I saw the price went up to his current number in Carolina, which is 47 uh, It was $4,700. $4,700 for a mask? For a game-worn mask, which is not, it's not true. It's a warm-up worn mask because James Reimer was not the starting goalie for these, the, um, what was it? The Centennial, no, not the Centennial Classic. The the Winter Classic in um, Ann Arbor. Yeah, Ann Arbor. where the, the, at the big you. at the big Michigan, the big state. house, the big, big house. house. With uh, um, that was Jonathan Bernier in net with his brown pads. Yeah, that's that's uh, the one Berkey was talking about when Gary Bettman was like, "Hey, can you sell forty thousand tickets? Can you sell sixty thousand? Sixty thousand tickets? Can you yeah. sell?" Yeah, and Berkey goes, "Give me forty eight hours. Hey, can you <laughs> do this other enormous thing? Yeah, I need an other day." Like, get out of here. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Every stuff. one of you, you thank the Leafs. You yeah. thank the Leafs for hockey. Damn it. You thank yeah. the Leafs for the thing that you enjoy. Well, they're fans. They're fans. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's you the thank fans. them. What are you, what are you been curling up watching all those KHL games on Dazzin? <laughs> I've been. I have too, actually. I have Dazzin. It's great. I watch the own Dynamo, people. Dynamo I know. I'm just calling it Dazzin. I, I, I remember watched. when they first uh, launched in Canada and everyone was so confused. Like, okay, what is this DZ thing and what mm. is it going to be? And then they bought like all the Premier League and some NFL and they're like, oh, this is legit. But when it launched in Canada, it was like, do you want to watch South Korean soccer? <laughs> yeah. It was like, not really, not particularly, no. Uh, but yeah, as soon as they got EPL and then they got, they were going to be, I think, the only broadcaster, like exclusive rights holder of, of, uh, football like nfl football in in canada and then i think they did one week of it and then it mm -hmm. didn't go well and then i think now ctv has it again as well yeah it was for the uh the red zone channel so they bought that right. and then they took it off all of the cable boxes so you couldn't get that on like a rogers box or a bell box or anything and it lasted the, just like you said one week and all the broadcasts were like ah uh -uh, we're not having this online only thing of the nfl Yes. Back on there. So, yeah. 100%. 100%. So, um, what's this Dazedin? 
at all the Canadians. <laughs> it's all, I mean, it's it's a pretty good it's a pretty good product, um, oh, yeah. and I think they're doing like their own shows now too in England and that sort of thing. Like they actually do their own, like there's like streamable shows there. So anyway, long story short, um, Steve, uh, I just wanted to know how deep you dove into that. Obviously, you knew the specifics of the mask. Were there any wear and tear marks on the mask? What oh. can you tell us about the mask? You can, I'm sure you remember every detail. Wear and tear makes it better. Um, but I didn't do the deep dive that you think I did, Adam, because had I done that, it might have gone up to 10, perhaps even 15%. <laughs> and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, but I wanted it, but I couldn't. See, see there's like a dichotomy with Steve and Jesse knows this. Um, usually when Steve opens his wallet, bats fly out of it. Uh, but, but. Wow. <laughs> But when it comes oh, to hockey right? memorabilia, he's the first one to go, you know what? Pickering flea market, I'm in. What, I, what you got for me this Saturday? <laughs> hey, it's a, I buy and sell at the Pickering flea market. No, oh, that's right. That's right. Mostly Adam, what sell. happens more? Does Steve open his wallet more often mm -hmm. or step on the gas pedal? Oh, oh man. Wow. Woo! Jesse, if, if Steve could drive to Toronto without ever pressing the gas pedal, you know when you just put it in a drive and it just sort of rolls? Yeah. Ask, ask if Steve wants to go. Buddy, uh, <laughs> taking the 401, I don't need the gas pedal. <laughs> and the DVP, I just roll. That's why I it's just, the perfect street for you. You live in the best place. Why do we ever tell you to move to Toronto? I'm happy to roll. But meanwhile, there's Hot Wheels Wild over there. The other day I was on the phone with him, and I just hear, yeah, so I was thinking... Uh, I was thinking, and I, I just cut him off. I go, did you pass him? I did pass him. <laughs> and he goes, I did. <laughs> yeah, I'm safer in that car than my other car. So, uh, but sorry, I'm safer in, in my other car than that car. But yeah, my pickup. My I other car. <laughs> I can buy a mask. <laughs> I can buy it. It's the year of the mask. I want a goalie mask. Well. Give it to me. Um, anyway, I just, uh, I thought that was very funny with it. We should check that out now. Obviously, um, there's a ton to get to on this episode, surprisingly, because, you know, there's not anything NHL wise that's really kind of come out. We've heard some of the, you know, we had Chris on last week talking about some of the boring shit that, you, you know, that you've probably already heard before, <laughs> no you know, offense, roster CJ. size and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, well, who cares? Right. It's sort of, well, tell me about it when it's done. Do you know what I mean? Like this information that leaks out, well, how big is the taxi squad going to be? Oh my God. I understand that they I need to talk about that. Well, it's, it is, is it as a complete picture though? Mm. Like, oh, is there going to be capital impl implications? Stuff like that. I'm super interested in that, but announce a flip in game first. Then I'll be interested in the taxi squad. And of course we'll get into our regular segment, which this show should have just been called. How does this affect the Leafs? Um, it should have been. Yeah, uh, it, it really, it, Steve Dangle podcast is a bit of a misnomer. Now, uh, we do need to talk about today, Travis Hamannick, uh, Eugene Melnick is starting his own blog, Walter Gretzky's merch theft, and could an SHL game have been thrown because of gambling? A Swedish elite league game thrown potentially because of gambling. The particulars of the case are very interesting, and obviously oh, uh, CJ was tweeting about it today. Uh, there has to be some translations done, but what a... Whew, what a fascinating thing that'll be. And I, I'm kind of curious to see how this goes because there is a full investigation on as we speak right now. It's, it's wild. I haven't heard a match. I'm trying to think of the last time or if I've ever heard of a match fixing scandal in hockey. I you have to think it's happened though, right? Well, of course, if there's a sport, it's been fixed at some point. Right. Um, but it's just a question of, you know, which like what I mean, and and you know, if there was a match match fix, did we even know about? It? Right. Uh, how many have the Leafs been behind? I wonder. <laughs> the whole league. You know, Just, oh, that's why they blew this lead and blew that lead. And it's it's funny that this story came out, uh, just happened to come out shortly after CJ told a story on our show, where. A, a lot of uh, people, including sports reporters, lost money on the David Ayers game because they started betting the over. They started, uh, you know, betting on the leash for the comeback and they're going to win and they end up losing the frigging game. And wow. then sure enough, this story comes out. It's well, so, you know, after a quick Google search, the most recent match fixing in hockey came from uh, the Belarusian 
championship in well, that's 2019. Not surprising. <laughs> so uh, really, the on Belarusians November, are yeah. In November of 2019, uh, apparently a couple of players fixed the match, and seven of them were suspended, and the suspensions were upheld this summer. So there you go. Okay, now Grabowski would do that. Wow. I have a question. It's no, I, I and it's not that has nothing to do with anybody from Belarus. I think it's just that we we've seen what happened this summer with the political situation over there. Things are different. Um, what happened? <laughs> oh, they had a they've had a they've had a dictator essentially for 30 plus years who continually reelects himself. And then they had somebody run against him. And he, this this it was a I, I think she was like a kindergarten or a substitute teacher. She was a teacher. And her yeah. husband was running and then he was either sick or shot or something. Oh, so God. then she had to jump in and became this massive national celebrity and then had to leave and go to Latvia before the election because her life was in danger. And basically nobody in the United Nations has has accepted the results of the Belarusian election that happened in 2020 because this guy, quote unquote, won again. And he was trying to court the Americans. So he was trying to get an American embassy opened back up in, I think it's, is it Minsk? Uh, I believe so. So he was trying to get the Americans to open diplomatic relations with Belarus again. So he'd have, from what I read from, uh, I think the Guardian, it was taught, they were talking about how, you know, Belarus is a bit isolated. So they are politically reliant on the Russians. And that can be, that can come with its own pitfalls, right? If you're, you know, it's sort of like if you're working with Putin, you're kind of doing what Putin wants, whether that benefits you or not. So they were trying to, I think his name is Alexander Luch, Luchfen, Luchenko. Uh, he was trying to get the Americans involved. And then this election happens. It's clearly a sham. And the Americans are like, we're not going to open an embassy there. Like, are you kidding me? Um, you got to clean this up. You got to step aside. Obviously, he hasn't. So things continue. But it's a, basically a dictatorship and has been ever since the Soviet wow. Union fell. That's, that's so a that's a really early, uh, early installment of Adam's history corner. How many decades ago was this? <laughs> uh, several, several decades of, of days ago. <laughs> oh, it was isn't that, wow. isn't that not similar to uh, Putin's run? Because didn't he create a position higher than like yes. the president so that he could just be in power? Isn't he like the, ultimate president now? Yeah, he like the Duma, which is their parliament, uh, basically said that I think the original constitution was like, you could only do two or three terms, kind of like the American one. And then he said, well, I guess, I guess it was two terms in a row. So he stepped aside for four years while somebody who basically answered to him took over. And then he created like super, the super Putin spot. And now he has pushed through legislation in the Duma that makes it illegal for any president uh, to ever be prosecuted ever again and their family too. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. He so, he's I, it's, it's a meme, but it's true. He's he's been leader long enough that he's met three popes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah. I don't think I'm going there. No, <laughs> man. I'd love to see Russia, though. Man, the history and the culture and the you know, that's Google. that's the sad part that gets buried in all this is all of these countries have incredibly long and deep histories. There's lots and of countries. It's such a shame that. Yeah. Um, it's such a shame that, that, uh, the political situations are unstable. Like one country I'd love to go see mostly because of Istanbul is, is Turkey. Uh, but it's, you, you can't go right now. I mean, you can, uh, but there are some serious political issues there and it's a, uh, bro, I'd like to go to Quebec. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, I'm, talk I'm talking when COVID's over, right? Like I'd love to see. I want to go to your and house. <laughs> Order me a pizza. I can't even I know, have that. I haven't seen you in months. Um, Damn it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, so it's a shame. And you hope that that these situations stabilize. And obviously, for normal citizens like us, it's probably not a huge deal. But it, it, all the same, you want to you want to be very careful about certain countries and where you go and what you do. And um, it's just it, it makes me sad. And, you know, Russia is such a center of hockey, too. I would love to go see, uh, uh, you know, any, like any hockey game in Moscow or St. Petersburg would love to. I think it'd be mm. incredible. Um Probably not Siberia. I probably wouldn't want to go there. But well, you know, I do. <laughs> you want to go to Siberia to watch? I do. I am a You're big believer. Mind. I'm a big believer, and you go to cold places when it's cold. Okay, but what? Siberia is like you step outside and die cold. I don't think. That's, yeah. Like I'll go to Stockholm in the winter. That's where I would do that. That's I'll go to cold Helsinki as hell too. Yeah, sure. But it's not the Siberia. Which one's cold as hell? 
got Stockholm is not a former penal colony. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's you know because well, of how cold okay, it was. Adam, I'm I'm gonna. Listen, I used to work for the KHL, so I'm privy to certain information. Uh-huh. Their arenas are not former prisons I, w- or active ones. Do we know that? Do we know that for sure? You know what? We Vitas, I'm not sure. <laughs> Vitas Chehov might be, but the rest, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. So listen, I, I'm just a big fan of, and I, you know, my family's Russian, so uh, partially anyway. So oh, this answers everything. I know. So I'd like to, you know, I'd love to to go back and kind of retrace and like, we're right, we're on the border of like Russia and like Lithuania. So, um, yeah, I love to go see, um, all of those spots, but it's just right now you're like, I, you know, of, of the list of places that I'd like to go and feel safe at, I know Russia is actually, apparently if you travel there, it's nothing, it's easy and, and you're pretty safe. It's just, just not feeling comfortable yet right now for me. So, uh, anyway, long story short, Belarus, uh, not surprised that there's a match match uh, match fixing scandal there. Not surprised at all. Yeah. Jesse, would there be any opportunity? That's how we got there. Could we check out uh, when the last accused NHL one was? Would you be able to NHL? That? Ooh, I don't oh. think yeah. if there ever was one. I well, don't know. So I guess I guess we're doing this then. Yeah, we're um, doing it now, and I'll read the I'll read the details of the story right now while Jesse's looking that up. Is that okay? Absolutely, because there is an NHL prospect implicated in this scandal. So this is interesting. Now, Steve, and you're when have have- you're ready, uh, I guess the only thing would be Operation Slapshot. Oh, that was the Rick Tockett yeah. betting on the games, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So Rick Tockett, Janet Gretzky, and a few other big former players. Can you? Re- I don't remember the particular. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read it out to you right now. Uh, okay. The operation was made public on February 6, 2006. This is Operation Slapshot. Rick Tockett, an assistant coach for the Phoenix Coyotes, uh, and Janet Jones, the wife of ice hockey NHL great Wayne Gretzky, were among those under investigation or indicted with charges pertaining to the operation. Also uh, under investigation and suspended uh, st- was suspended state trooper James Harney who was allegedly Tockett's partner in the operation. Um, the investigation also referred to the possibility of an NHL team owner, half a dozen NHL players, and other coaches and team staff members being involved in this investigation. Uh, as of February 8th, 2006, two more names were mentioned, uh, Jeremy Roenick and Travis Green of the Leafs. Um, Travis Green? Yeah. As in current Vancouver current Canucks Vancouver coach. Head coach yeah. mm-hmm. The ring was said to allegedly have ties to the Bruno Scarfo crime family, which was wow. which has base in operations around Philly and Pennsylvania and southern New Jersey. So the so ties would probably just be like, hey, this is who's running the bets. They, yeah, that's their bookie. So it was an illegal nationwide gambling ring amongst these people. And um, in on May 25th, 2007, Tockett pleaded guilty to conspiracy and promoting gambling and was placed on probation for two years in his role in Operation Slapshot. He avoided jail time and was allowed to return to full active duty in February um, of uh, provided he refrains from gambling in any way of the future. He's back in the NHL. Oh, yeah, yeah. he was back. He, you know, my question is, though, hold on, Steve, one sec, one sec. Well, I think we have the same is there, question. Is there anything in there about betting on the games themselves, like the NHL games? So they don't um, go into specifics about which games they bet on. They were just they were 50-50 partners. So it could have been rain. NBA or something. Yeah, it could have been a different sport. But it was okay, James ahead, Harney, sorry. that state trooper, and uh, Tockett, who were the main uh, guys in the gambling ring. Well, and even, like... Isn't the weird thing about the Pete Rose scandal, and maybe you guys know better, what, didn't he bet on his team? Yes, like he, and he was managing them. Yeah, so he yes, said he but never he bet. He bet, it on, he bet on them to win. Yeah, he said he never bet on his team to lose, so. Well, if you're but right. I mean, also for like the first 95% of the scandal, he said, I never bet on baseball. And then he said he bet on baseball. And then he said he never bet on his team. And oh. then he said he bet on his team. And then he said he only bet for them to win. So who knows what actually happened? And uh, I think so, I know. B- base, oh, he rose live, guys. <laughs> Now, I, mean, <laughs> I love the face. I mean, it's pretty obvious, didn't it? Didn't you go, well, that's right. a lie, and that's so, a lie, and that's a lie. With Operation Slapshot, like, I'm talking about, like, oh, th- there's illegal activity, and then there's conspiracy to make his own team lose. You know what I mean? To make his own team throw a game. Like, uh, I didn't hear there. 
like the no i didn't hear that either right but you know you i think at the time too it was illegal to bet on i okay so the gambling thing with the nhl has always been very very interesting it's why it took so long to get a team in vegas because there were offers and discussions about this for like 20 years but the big worry at the time was um uh well if you put a bunch of players in vegas they're just going to be in the casinos and that's clearly not happened there's Um, nowhere else in the states you can get up to trouble Exactly. And also, Howard. frankly, the views on gambling have have uh, changed so much in the last 20 years. It's not CD casino gambling anymore. It's sports betting um, with very above board, clean operations. You know, it's not the it's not the Vegas of the 1940s, 50s, 60s anymore. And so when you're talking about these sorts of things, there's tons of money to be made. So instantly, especially in the States, everybody's getting out of the way. If there's money to be made, let's make it legal. Uh, and, and frankly, there's so much money and that the NFL especially made so much money off this. The NHL finally was like, screw it. Let's go. Now, um, I find it fascinating the, the way that narrative has shifted. I wonder if today, if Rick Tockett, Janet Jones, Travis Green, Jeremy Roenick, whoever else was involved in this, if they were involved in a gambling ring, That wasn't really a ring at all. They were just gambling money. It would be their private business. So besides the fact that they work with organized crime, which is scary, um, I think, you know, you you don't, you obviously don't want to be a part of that. Uh, That's an obvious, but I think that had the rules as they currently exist now and the access to gambling as it currently exists now been available in 2006, probably highly unlikely that all of those people in esteemed position making millions of dollars with a ton to lose would go yeah you know what organized crimes for us right right and i think that's sometimes it's like we have had we have laws left over in this on this um on this part of the world that are from our puritanical roots that are a little bit like behind in the times and i need an adam wild bingo card (laughs) puritanical (laughs) Like, no offense, you're not hearing that word on chicklets. Like, yeah, no. You're not, you're not hearing that on 31 but, Thoughts. But I would love to see Biz gamble, say right? puritanical. It's the same Whitney thing might. as, like, you weren't allowed to. Uh, might <laughs> I want to hear Whitney say it. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, uh, it, it's, I think the idea is that it's like drinking. Drink or don't drink. In Ontario, we had laws against you couldn't even buy alcohol on a Saturday. You can't, you can't sh- oh, shopping on the Sabbath for alcohol? Up until 20 years ago, you couldn't. Stupid though. Why not? What if I don't? What if the Sabbath doesn't mean shit to me? What do I care? I want to buy some beer. I'm not religious. Yeah. Oh my so, God. You know the thing is, is that you know it's it's these these laws that existed that were morality laws, and the idea with law is not for it to be moral. It's for it to be to create a balanced society. And so, if those laws had existed the way they do now. Back then, I doubt that ring even happens, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, yeah, I haven't heard of any match-fixing scandals in hockey, but maybe maybe they've existed, and we just didn't know because they were well In the NHL. Off. We've heard in of it in NHL. hockey. Is, yeah. In the NHL, excuse me. And, if, and, if, and like, the thing is, is that it's like, it's like you see one rat, there's 10 that you don't see. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I feel like we're like tip of the iceberg. Um, I feel like if we did see one, there would probably be a lot more. Like there was an NBA referee when we were growing up who was – I believe throwing games. Oh yeah, uh, there's there's a rumor about there is a he wrote a book about it. Um, so we yeah, Tim Donaghy. Tim Donaghy, that's yeah. right. He I would, remember uh, that. He would bet heavily on his own games. I I should probably read his book. It's probably a good book. I don't know. I bet it's fascinating. Yeah. And yeah. just to put your uh, the gambling numbers in in perspective, this is an article from uh, December fourteenth, so two days ago. It says oh. another month, another sports bet record in New Jersey. Nine hundred and thirty-one million dollars in no in November was bet on sports. What so they're, sports? They're closing in on the one billion dollar a month record. Football is probably Steve. So Football all of all, all the I sports. mean, okay, gambling, there's one. Gambling in New Jersey is legal, and you can bet on games, and that's how much revenue they're making a month. Nine hundred and thirty-one million dollars. And we can't get a casino in downtown Toronto because everybody's worried about the the moral degradation of the city. Well, that's Crazy. why, Adam. Yeah. Oh, Ray Jackson. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Man, free if, you wanna, if you want uh, tax dollars, it's a great way to get them. Now, I, uh, I let's talk about um, this story, which we've delayed and delayed and delayed on. <laughs> so, Chris, I want to know more about Belarus. <laughs> uh, 
Chris said, uh, Chris Johnson said, potentially big story brewing in Swedish hockey. There are allegations that members of, I think it's Bjork Loven. Uh, yes. Uh, members say. of if our Swedish listeners will reach out on mass. I'm sure. Uh, Bjork Loven fixed tonight's eight, four loss to Mora in Alsvikan. Alsvikan. I don't know. Alsvenskan. Alvenskan. There you go. Alsvenskan. Uh, yeah, you know, you cause Swedish names are. Easy. Uh, Easy. The, C- the CEO of the team says he welcomes the investigation, which is already underway. So I guess the story goes that Bjork Loven was up three, nothing in the first period at home and surrendered the next seven goals. So much money was bet on Mora that the odds changed in unusual ways. And the game was eventually removed from many betting sites. Very interesting. Now, so if you're doing that, doesn't prove anything though. no, but it is interesting that the odds change so drastically that they took it off of websites. Now, I'm just looking at the Bjork Loven roster. Uh, Carl Grundstrom, former Leaf prospect, he's a, he could make the Kings this year. Uh, he's on that roster. But I guess the big guy involved in all this is Bjork Loven's goalie, who happens to be Connor Ingram, who I guess was in net that game. Ooh. Uh, former third round pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning. I believe he's now with the Predators. Connor Ingram. Um, his numbers are terrible uh, in all Svenskin. And it's weird because like he's supposed to be he's he's one of the sort of goalies to keep an eye on. Um, like Tampa gave him up for next to nothing because I guess they just had to dump a body for some reason. Um, but he had a 933 in the AHL last season. Like this is a good goalie prospect who is with numbers like that likely to play uh NHL games. Is Al Svenskin a is it a good are they a good team? Uh Al Svenskin's a good league. Players get drafted out of it all the time. Um or this is league, such yeah. a it's such but a no weird... sorry what I mean sorry Bjork Loven Mora are these good teams like what do what, what do we know? Mora, I know about them. Uh, Bjork Loven, I've never heard of, uh, to be okay. totally honest. Mora, I, I, now I might have this wrong, but I believe the SHL and Alsvenskin are different things, and Alsvenskin oh, okay. so, is just a tier below them. My but, apologies, then, to everybody I've offended. <laughs> but the interesting thing this year, and I sort of graded on a curve for the prospect pyramid too, because a lot of the Leaf prospects are European, and a lot of them are in these, you know, tier two, whatever, junior, uh, European leagues. I'm not putting too much stock in anyone's numbers this year. And in terms of like Connor Ingram being on this team or Carl Grundstrom being on this team, I'm not judging their skill for it. I, at this point, players just needed to find a place to play. You, you know what I mean? Um, the, the Leafs have a Canadian defense prospect playing in, finish tier two mac hollowell uh just because he wanted a place to play and he found one Mm -hmm. and he's played six games there so yeah they did the loan thing with him yeah but he's the as far as i know he's the only north american prospect who is playing in europe right now or playing any games at all actually because mikhail abramov was playing in the queue william villanov was playing in the queue but that has since ceased operations for the time being. So anyway, it is, uh, it's interesting to have an NHL prospect at the center of this. And he was yeah. sent home for it too. Well, if he's terrible though, I mean, if he's having a terrible year. Yeah, it's not the impression I'm getting. The impression, the impression I'm getting, getting, the impression I'm getting is he was sent home for this. He's only played nine games. So his numbers probably suck because of the one game where he allowed seven consecutive goals by the sounds of it oh boy and as a leaf fan let me tell you there are far more subtle ways to blow a game (laughs) like there are blatant ways to blow a game you don't have to give up seven consecutive goals to do it you know jesse i just thought of something Uh uh-huh do you think james reimer fixed game seven of the of the 2013 series what I mean, yeah. I'd have to see if the odds moved drastically oh, on Pro Line. We should check know? that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you got to ask the question. People you might do say, not. 
You don't got it. You know what you could do is shut the hell up. <laughs> wow. That's exactly what you could do. That's exactly what you could do. Wow. That you would say that. That's crazy. James Freddie's in on it too then. That. Can't believe James Reimer would be associated with something like that. It's just a squeaky clean guy normally. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe that's the front. <laughs> maybe that's the front. It'd be the best front I've ever seen, man. He's got you all James- fooled. He's golly gee. There's no way James Reimer would be involved in something it, like that. Yeah. Uh, blockbuster news today in the NHL. James Reimer implicated in Operation Oshucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it could, you know what, Adam? Mm. 2020. I mean, anything's possible, I suppose. Uh, I just don't don't think it'd be him. So uh, Mitch Marto said on Tim and Sid yesterday that the team he's most excited to play in the um, Canadian division are the Canucks. He wants to get a closer look at Patterson and Hughes and who could blame him, right? Like that's going to be a really, really good team. There are though, those who say, listen, uh, the Canucks should have been able to take a step forward this year, but because of their shitty cap situation, they really maybe, I mean, maybe they did just because they, they were able to steal Nate Schmidt from Vegas but they are still right up against it and probably have more issues to come, right? Um, yes. So one of the things that uh, they've been linked to is Travis Hamanick. Now, it's fascinating that, that Travis Hamanick is still available. This is a right-handed defenseman. How is Travis Hamanick still on the market? Even if you see Travis Hamanick as a 6'7 guy, right shot defenseman, how is that possible? So I did have a theory about this, okay. and I'm not entirely Ooh. proud of it. Okay. Um, do I play but... the X Files theme? Oh, please! Can you do that? I could. Uh, yeah, if you actually a, want it. Get a strip from the internet. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, would we get stripped? Mm, I don't know. Get in trouble? I don't know. I don't know. Light, light, no, if you talk over it, it's fine. Just whistle. Oh, just oh, go. Just whistle. Talk over. Okay. All right. <laughs> just go. Just go. <laughs> Come on. Okay, there we go. Come on, um, Sully. Let's go. Scully. I wonder if he's being judged for not playing in the bubble. Because he opted to, because he was with Calgary, right? Yeah. And did he not opt to not play in the bubble? Yes, he did opt not to play in the bubble. And I'm opt not. Opt not to play in the bubble. I'm wondering if teams are going, well, you know, desire to win hockey things, hockey things, hockey things. Oh now, I don't know God. if that's true. Uh, it's also entirely possible that he's being particular. Because if you remember, he was with the Islanders, and he's like, well, I want to be traded to Western Canada. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, well, that limits you to three, arguably four teams. And what about the Jets? Oh, well, he doesn't want to go there. Well, what the – which – just say you want to be traded to Calgary or something okay. like that. And he did accept a trade to the Leafs, but uh, Van Riemsdyk blocked it. Yeah. He did? What yeah, was that story? Van Riemsdyk uh, was going to be swapped for Hamannick in 2017 at the draft, right after they'd lost to um, Washington. Washington. My understanding was, yeah. At least tried to trade, trade JVR after that series. He was good. Yeah, but I think they were like, after this next year, we know we can't keep him. What? I mean, oh. it's a good thing they did because, man, he was a monster on the power play that last year. He was really good. Yeah, he was a really good Leaf, man. He's great. He's and great, they were also but... right to let him go. Sorry, Philly. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If uh if anybody is judging Hamannick for opting out, it was because his daughter had a respiratory uh virus earlier in the year and he didn't want to get COVID and compromise his daughter. So Well, there um, you go. Yeah, if Fair. anybody's judging him for that, they are terrible. Okay. So now, I will now, say be... my theory I A was pulled out of my ass mm-hmm. and B I didn't know that. Yeah. So I assume Listen, we, we can talk about hockey culture and all its flaws. I, I mean, I don't know if anyone's that monstrous. Maybe if they don't, you know, if they don't know, they might think that, though. Right. Right. But I think, Steve, what, you all, what else you said, is it remains true. If he wants to be in Western Canada, that limits you to about three teams. And one and of them all is the Canucks. <laughs> I'm shocked, though. I'm shocked that Edmonton wouldn't have done everything they could to try to. And maybe they have behind the scenes. I haven't seen anything on that. But he seems to me like a better fit in Edmonton than he does in Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver stacked on defense. Um, obviously, it's an amazing place to live and great organization to play for. But and, and not that Edmonton isn't. But I'm I'm just saying, like if, as far as opportunity goes, I would think the Oilers would offer far more opportunity. Um, you know, I know they signed Tyson Berry, but like they're going to need somebody to play defense around that. Um, and I, I don't know. It's just, I mean, they've got. 
some great players, but even, even him, like instead of like a Chris Russell or something like that, like you bring him in on a PTO, you get him signed for league minimum and you get him for a year. Cause that's, it looks like that's what the Canucks are going to get. They're going to probably get Travis Hammond at a league minimum. You think so? Well, because he's oh. going to be PTO'd. That's who, crazy. Who out there as a free agent right now is going to get more than a million dollars uh, without going to Europe? Like what's Mike Hoffman going to do? If Mike I Hoffman have, gets league man, that's like well, fire his agent crazy. to start. Yeah, um, but it might be Mike. It might be Mike. This he might have done this to himself too, right? Anthony Duclair can fire himself. Like I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, if the rest boy. of them can fire their agent, he can fire himself. I. But also, there's no point signing anybody right now for any team unless you have an abundance of cap space and money, or if you're close to the cap, you find out more details about this taxi squad situation. Right. Um, Cause Thomas Drance was writing, you know, a few things about the Canucks and their flexibility. And while it sounds like um, Michael Furland is not going to be available for the season. So he'd be on LTIR, which means the Canucks can spend above the cap, which means, you know, I, I would assume they'd get Hamannick anyway. Well, um, what if they could fit Hamannick and Hoffman? Because what is that, $3.5 million that's on the LTIR? It's not the hardest sell, man. Come live in Vancouver. Play with Patterson um, for a year. Play with Patterson. Oh, or, or any, like, the Canucks are a fun offensive team. Uh, they're a fun young team. Um, Columbus is a sneaky option to just come in and grab a bunch of people. Um Florida is starting to become a team that just does not operate under the cap. Like they're just, they're, they're a very odd team the way they spend money. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're going to see a blast of news the second they announce the rules. But the problem with conducting business right now is teams don't know the rules and no one's being coy about it. There, There just aren't any yet. There literally are not rules. (laughs) <laughs> so how do you plan for that? Yeah, there are 19 guys who are free agents right now who made three million dollars or over last season. Wow, who so are they? I assume 19 of those guys are going to take a pay cut. Who are some of those players? Some of those guys include um, Mike Hoffman, Hoffman Craig Anderson, Carl Ar- Alsner, uh, Jonathan Erickson, Justin Abelkader, Travis Hamanick, uh, Ron Hainsey. Connor Sheary, Andreas Anasiu, um, Corey Schneider, Mikael Granlund. That's some of the list. Yeah. A lot of expiring deals that you would never sign again there. Like yeah. Alsner, Schneider. Uh, I mean, no offense to Ron Hainsey, but he's like 40, right? Uh, and he do, he was brought into Ottawa to do a job. So, yeah, that's a mercenary. Couldn't you see? Couldn't you see the Leafs going, ah, we give him a PTO? Ron Hainsey? Yeah, why not? <gasps> Oh, no. What if he doesn't? No. What if? No. What if Brody and no. uh, and Morgan Riley don't gel? No, you don't super, upset the fan base like that. Super unpopular opinion. The Leafs uh, don't need another defenseman. Well, yeah, that's actually kind of true for the first time. The Leafs don't need more players. They need to find out how many players they're allowed to have. Um, because like I, I look at their roster, I could fill out five or six lines, yep. and I look at their defense and. Geez, we could do five pairs. Mm-hmm. We just need to know how many guys they're allowed to carry. Nick Robertson, to me, is one of the most fascinating cases in the entire NHL. Like, how the hell does he fit into anything? I think he pushes people out, right? You know, I don't, I, if I'm constructing the lease roster right now, what I would do, depend, you know, if this was a normal year, forget the fact that, you know, there's no, there may be no OHL for him to go back to. But let's say there's an AHL, and because there's no OHL, Nick Robertson can play in the AHL. If I'm Kyle Dubas, I'm saying, well, at this point, you're not in the lineup, and you'll have to really impress us and push someone out. Someone has to literally lose their job for you to get this. Otherwise, you're going to go light it up in the A for a year because we frankly don't care. And even if it's the first 40 games that you're in the A, then fine, we'll bring you up when, when the playoffs come. He cannot play in the A. Why not? Because he's a North, he's a teenage North American. He has to go back to you, junior. European yeah, but in junior, junior, if there's no junior this year, that rule changes. Is oh, is that has to has to? Is that what are you the going to tell these young kids that they can't play hockey? Uh, that they've been doing it forever. No, they've they been can't do, do that. until that rule change is made. 
uh, like his option, if he, if Nick Robertson does not make the Leafs, my assumption is he plays in Europe. Is the OHL in operation this year? Like I know that until the they AHL say yes, I'm going to assume no. Is the OHL OHL there? They have a um, they have a prospective start date of February fifth. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. or fourth, okay. fourth or fifth. If they, if they are going to play, then Nick Robertson probably goes back there. But You'd I mean. Think. I, I and the thing that the he'd be available for the playoffs, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I, I think that's a silly rule, by the way. It's stupid, but it's a bit not. of a well because it's not. It's clearly not a safety issue, even if it's painted as one. Mm-hmm. If it was a safety issue, then William Nylander would not be allowed to play in the AHL when he did, or right. Kasperi it's, Kapanen for that matter. Both of them were teenagers, and think, Rasmus Sandin. I think the idea behind the rule is to give the OHLs their their stars when yes. when they graduate, if they have to go back, that the OHL keeps yeah. their their community there. Ra- their Rasmus players. Sandin's one of the dumbest examples. Yeah, he, he was an OHL player who happened to be from Sweden, so he was allowed. Right, and the, well, the problem with that that rule for me with the OHL is that the whole point of the OHL is to graduate the stars. And I know that they want draws at their games, but the reality is there's going to be like five guys each year that are good enough to make the NHL and the rest are going to be there. So I'm, I'm unconvinced that that would somehow really hurt them. I, I, I don't, I don't think the OHL, it's not like the OHL doesn't exist. If you know, they don't have Nick Robertson, they well, lost Connor McDavid and survived. Here's Nick Robertson's challenge, right? You got to convince me a, you're good enough to make the team. B, you're so good that we should burn the first year of your ELC in a lockout shortened season. Mm. Uh, not lockout shortened season, sorry. Um, I'm just sorry, it's muscle memory. COVID shortened season, pandemic shortened season. Wait, um, wait a minute, Sandine. Yeah, like, well, which they did with Sandine, but they didn't know that. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? In fairness, they didn't know that. I'm sure years down the line, I'll hold it against them in a trade tree, but I'll have to remind myself that they didn't know that at the time. Nick Robertson is going to, if he had an eight or nine game preseason, like he usually would have, he could put together a nice little resume where he goes, here's how head and shoulders above Jimmy VC, Ilya Mikheyev, et cetera, I am. He's going to have max two preseason games to do that. And potentially, the Leafs could potentially give Nick Robertson a nine-game tryout. Mm-hmm. But to Which burn is- his ELC in a season where he's going he's gonna to play a maximum of 56 games, that's a tough sell for me, if, man. If I were them... I would give him the nine games if he really is going to be a difference maker in the in the lineup because nine games over fifty six is a huge percentage of your season. That's your that's that's about twenty percent of yeah. your season right there. So Ooh, if Adam's you can, doing math. so if you can stack your lineup for twenty percent of the season, send him back and then bring him back for the playoffs. Why not game not the bad. system? Get as many points as you can if you need them. If you need him, if you're like, he legitimately makes our team better and we can get out to a hot start. If we've got Nick Robertson in the, in the lineup and then we send him back, do it, do it. Uh, Adam, I'm proud of you. 16%. Oh. Very close. Not there bad. you go. That's, Not bad. that's decent off the top of your head. That's pretty good. Not bad. So yeah. Anyway, long story short, 16% of the season. If you get out to a hot start, you go seven, one and one rather better than 07 and fun, which is what the Leafs started out as a few mm. years ago. Um, you know, then that's, I think that's a pretty legitimate reason to have them there, at least for the first nine. And even if they're hot, who cares? Put the NHL guys back in and say, Nick, we'll see you in the playoffs. These are the dumb things I get hung up on. So the year that the Leafs started 07 and fun, mm-hmm. they finally won their ninth game. Who was it against and who scored a hat trick? Boston Bruins, Phil Kessel? No. Anaheim Ducks, Nicholas Hagman. Wow. Okay, am I weird that I liked Nicholas Hagman? No, he was good. I liked him. On a shit team. They were terrible. Yeah, people shit on him. I was like, Nick Hagman's okay. There's nothing wrong with this guy. No, and and like he was an important part of the FNUF deal. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what he did in Calgary, it was a big bag of nothing. (laughs) He did, like, I mean, Leaf fans can lament FNUF all they want. Like, that deal was not good for Calgary. 
Except they got Matt Stajan for a long time. Before. Yeah, the only the only thing it really cost the Leafs was some cap space, but they were able to offload that. It basically, unfortunately, turned into Cody Cece. Um, <laughs> right? No, not Cody Cece. Not Cody Cece. Um, no, that was Zaitsev. It cost. It got them. It got the Leafs. Um, Milan Mahalik. Oh yeah, I remember that. Who and scored in their home scored. opener in 2016? And then Mike Babcock's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, well, in fairness, I think it was more Lou Lamorello. He's like, oh, that's nice, but you make a lot more sense in the minors, so bye. Yeah, probably. Um, Sorry, bud. Okay. So anyway, long story short, it'll be very interesting to see what happens with Travis, Travis Hammock and the rest of these guys. And obviously, we're, we're in a holding pattern. We're waiting. Um, How many Canucks and Flames fans are losing their mind right now that we made that about Nick Robertson? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm sure they've got players that are in the same position, right? Everybody's going to have to, to kind of, I would honestly, it, it, even in school, they tell you, your teachers tell you start strong. Even if you coast the rest of the way, if you start strong in that first month, um, your, your grades coming down, it's a lot better than your grades trying to build. What teacher told you that our teachers in grade seven and grade eight were like, listen, start strong always start strong see because it's that's... always when we look at things in chunks like increments always better to start strong than to finish strong so, so... except for in the nhl when you finish weak and then you get bounced in the first round however you want to make the playoffs which the least need to do first they didn't do that last year you want to start really 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 strong that's what you learned at your blasphemous uh, public school there that's adam right. Joseph how so we know Catholics. wayne simmons is going to have a hot, uh, hot start then because he went to so. how with you that's right so he's gonna he have a hot start and then coast. I'm excited for healthy Wayne Simmons, man. Yeah, that's Me gonna too. be fun. Like that seeing him in a Leaf great. jersey was pretty cool. That, that was little, cool. You see that? Mm. Yes. And mm. I love uh, I love seeing him on the Sportsnet commercials with PC, where he's like uh, he's got no friend teeth and he's just laughing it up. And I'm like, man, Wayne, you just rule. Like he's, just, <laughs> he's that's, already that's got the a commercial. next jersey purchase, right? I think so. For, for most people, I'd like to. I yeah. think he would be. I think he would be a fan favorite. And if let's say let's say Wayne gets you 40 points this year. Ugh. Oh, I would. I don't think he's going to get 40. I would crap myself if he got 40. Sorry, in, a, in a, over a full 82 game. Oh, right. Right. That's 40 in 82. I wasn't yeah. even thinking about that. But if it's it's a bummer because had, ha, I mean, there's going to be a bunch anyway, but had this been a regular season that we were already in the third month of, the city would be packed with Simmons jerseys. Oh, yeah. yeah, it would be extremely popular. Oh, I, yeah. you know, this could be a hot take that comes back to haunt me, but I don't think this is his last season here. <laughs> and he hasn't played a game. I think it's that up this to is him. Be, well, it is up to him, but I also think um, I, I just have a feeling that's a nice marriage there. Uh, that's a really good one. Um, and I think he, he's going to be a guy that fans love. I also, it's interesting when I was watching this Marner interview with Tim and Sid and because uh, uh, Marner's got his, um, his virtual uh, charity um that he's that he's doing before the season starts um they were talking about uh you know did you did you talk to patrick marlowe about jumbo um and you know he was just talking about how excited he was and i guess he sent him a text and you know um the more i think about it and i know you know i know there's guys like i think born and i think burke and i think a few other guys are like where does this fit how does this work um i really like the more i think about the thornton deal the more i like it and what I love is the idea of him at third line center for 80% of the games. I like the more, the more I look at how the Leafs did in free agency this year, the more I like how forward thinking it was for how this season is going to be designed. Cause we saw all these signings and we're like, how the hell, how are they going to fit onto this roster? But now we're learning things about like taxi squads and whatnot. And I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. Like we might see, we're talking about like, how do you get Nick Robertson in the lineup? How do you even get Joe Thornton and Wayne Simmons in the lineup? Guys, I think there's going to be games where we see Travis Boyd, mm-hmm. who you just remembered as a leaf. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's not nothing about this year is typical. No, nothing no. about it is typical. And having too many players is good. It's always yeah. good though. It's always good. Well, that was one thing Bab said, like, we got to work on our depth. They have a lot of depth. You know, it's, people get down. I mean, it, and that's, we saw it with Muzzin. The second he went down, the series against Columbus was over. It was over. 
Well, and so much of the regular season when Riley went down was oh. over. It's the Leafs defense was thin enough that when Cody CC got hurt, it was noticeable. Yeah. <laughs> it got worse. A lot Martin of people Rich in time. Oh. <laughs> oh. Martin Richin's music. <laughs> if he if he plays this season, I don't I don't I Didn't don't he sign know. a two year extension? No, he signed a one year extension. One year extension. A few guys got two years because the Leafs are like basically just sacrifice to the Kraken. Just right. please, please take this. Well, it was interesting. I was reading, I think it was, was it Luke Fox the other day was posting about, Hey, who, who might they lose? And a couple of names that came up were Travis Dermott and Justin Hall. Lose uh, when? Uh, well, when the, Next when year. the, I mean, as soon as the season's over, they're going into that draft, right? So this there's obviously coming season. Or no, yeah. it's yeah, it's in the summer, isn't it? Let the this season play out for. I, oh man, remember Vegas? We spent the whole season talking about it, and we lost Brendan Leipzig, and Steve was like, "We're fucked. <laughs> We're screwed. <laughs> Shit." How I did was they lose intriguing prospect Brendan Leipzig. By un- the way, have you seen his DMs? They're great. <laughs> underratedly wrong take of mine. <laughs> underratedly catastrophic to be fair to be fair we had no idea about his dms and also beyond that his play looked pretty good i thought he was a player he he seemed like a seemed like a player yeah Yeah. um i thought ian white was a player and then he started tweeting adam you said something uh really minute but i think is very important uh you said the leafs didn't make the playoffs and i feel like a lot of people seem to forget that fact that yes. this past season, the Leafs failed to make the NHL playoffs and going into this year, that should be something on their mind. Asterisk. Well, Oh, it no. should definitely be on their mind. I think it should be on the fans mind too, that this is not a playoff team. You know it's what I watched this morning? 2020 campaign. You know what I watched this morning? You're, mm-hmm. you're never going to believe it. Every goal that Matthew scored this past season. Oh wow! What a surprise! <laughs> and you know and what your tradition. <laughs> you know what you're really not going to believe. Mm. I watched it more than once. Oh, oh whoa! Wow. I also watched it yesterday. <laughs> Man, that I said it in my seventy and seven videos. I he should have got more consideration for MVP. The team was so so lost without him. They were terrible last year. Let's be frank. Like they were not a good team. No, there was a game against the Devils where he scored the his first goal of the game was the fifth for the Leafs. And he scored a hat trick that game. Mm-hmm. The fifth goal was the game winner. He scored it when it was 5-1. <laughs> against the Devils! Like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. That that team drove me nuts. The amount of times he tied the game with an empty net. The overtime winners, the they're losing to Florida, they're losing to the Jets, they're losing to the Rangers. They're uh, and I know that's his gig. Eleven point six million dollars. Sorry, eleven point six three four. Did you know that's his number? But man, I I can't even talk shit about it because uh, pay that man his money. He oh, was extremely good. He scored when he was supposed to. Um, and the team in years past when he's gotten injured, the Leafs were able to stay afloat. I think last year they would have been toast. Uh, Absolute they would have been fucking toast. You know, the, a lottery pick. And there's a lot of people that'll, that'll be mad at us for saying that. Uh, but we saw what was on the ice and, and we mentioned, you know, when Muzzin goes down or Riley goes down or whatever, the reality is good teams can, can, can float that they can get through that. The uh, blues had terrorists. Uh, they, they basically didn't have Tarasenko the entire year. And they were still the Blues. They were a top five team without Vladimir Tarasenko. Yep. Wasn't a good team. Also, the the backup goalie situation really fucking hurt them. Like, uh, there's no... The lost points with Michael Hutchins, starting with that Montreal game, with Kapanen throwing his stick, and Ma- Max Domi chirping him, half, you know, Kapanen, you fucking, go, idiot. Kapanen. Yeah. <laughs> fucking idiot. That was a good <laughs> chirp. Uh, you know, that's that's the kind of stuff where... I just don't see that happening this year with Jack Campbell. I don't see – I think the team's just going to be a better team. Last year felt really fucking flat. And I think sometimes mentally, because sports are so mental, um, when you start – this, like, let's be honest. When you start a project with a boss that you hate and uh, – <laughs> And then you, and then the boss maybe changes throughout the project, it could still color how you feel about the project, Right. And I think, yeah, Sheldon Keefe definitely changed the way they played and tried a bunch of things. And I really liked the way he coached. 
um, it certainly felt like the team couldn't shake off the Mike Babcock start. And they're, they're, I mean, they were a part of it. They were responsible partly for it. Uh, but I also feel like they just were, they were sort of done with Mike. It seemed pretty clear. Uh, and he was sort of done with upper management. And there seemed to be a lot of not hockey thinking going on, a lot of power playing and I'm going to make the call. No, I'm going to make the call. No, I'm going to make the call. And then there's, you know, Austin Matthews scoring a bunch of goals and Mitch Marner's upset about how Toronto fans reacted to uh, his negotiation and, and that affected him. And, you know, John Tavares, I think had some injuries and, you know, Freddie Anderson's not healthy and Michael Hutchinson's not playing really well in the NHL at all. And, you know, Morgan Riley goes down and then you lose Muzzin and there's a lot of things, but you have to be able to, as a team, if you want to be a good team, you have to count on those things happening. Mm. Like you have to count on bad shit happening to you and figuring it out. And I think this year is going to be very interesting. They've obviously had enough time for a fresh start. Is this team a team or not? Because if this team doesn't go to the second round this year, uh, they're going to be, I think there's going to be some pretty serious changes. I know you're it depends to... on how they go out in the first round, but you can't have what you've had before. You cannot have what no. you've had before. You better see this team better rocket to the top of the standings uh, right away and better stay there and look dominant. And if you get, if you get bounced in the first round by some hot goalie, fine, but it can't be. No, lost no, in the same way. no, no. Okay, fine. No, no, I want you to I want you to take the hottest goalie in the league and make him regret ever taking up the sport. Fair. Like you look at the money this team makes. L- look at look at the star power up front, especially that everyone's like, you know, at least win around. No, fuck that. If you win around, you better win the second, third and fourth. Get in there or fifth if there's one of those this year. Yeah, because it sounds like there might be. Get in there. You have the team. Joe Thornton's not like, oh, yeah, let's win around. <laughs> that's true joe Good thornton point. wants the cup and to keep it in his beard forever <laughs> it's already grown back i'm sure I he wasn't a point a game player in switzerland for nothing man he was apparently he was above a point a game and then the last two games was held off the score sheet so he had 11 points in 12 games but no it would have oh! been, been nine and nine or sorry 10 11 points and nine has joe um, thornton hit a wall yeah <laughs> did joe thornton hit a wall Um, Let's talk about this Walter Gretzky merch theft thing, because this is an absolutely fascinating and, and kind of heartbreaking story. Um, Can I, can I give a little uh, context for the non Ontario listeners? So Walter Gretzky, obviously Wayne Gretzky's dad, this guy is a celebrity in his own right. Um, You know, he goes to the leaf games and everything. Uh, I got him to sign my sign that I brought when I was a kid once, because I saw he was sitting in my section. Me and my buddy, you know, spent the whole game working up the courage and we got him to sign it in the third period. Um, I saw him walking through Union Station once before they did all the renovations. And all it took was one person to go, it's Walter Gretzky. And I'm, he was surrounded. This guy was surrounded. There, there were stories of, so he still lives in Brantford, and, Ontario, you know, small, smallish town. Mm-hmm. And people just know where the Gretzky house is. They just know where the home Walt- Walter Gretzky lives in. They know where Wayne Gretzky grew up. And there were stories of like, he would see a car pull up to his house and stop. And someone would frantically run out of the car, take a, a few clumps of grass and then stuff it in the jar and run back into the car. And they would basically take parts of the lawn to be like, look, it's part of, Wayne Gretzky's house is grass. Yeah. So he's uh there the Gretzky family is like they're a big deal, but they're not exactly the most private. Like because people literally go to their home and steal their grass. Yeah. Walter yeah. Gretzky also was given the Order of Canada. Like yeah. he's he's a big deal. <laughs> and d- he had to rem- he had to relearn basically his whole life, did he not? Yes, he, I believe, had a stroke. And I interviewed him on breakfast television after that. Um, and I believe Wayne's sister was there at the time as well. This would have been 2015. So my memory's a bit foggy. I apologize. Um, but he was talking about, you know, he was just, I, I, I think he was there for a charitable initiative. And, and Walter, by the way, used to go to Wayne Gretzky's restaurant, which closed, unfortunately, this year, mm. uh, and have a beer before the game every game. And then you know, whenever, if you ever got to a Leaf game, they'd always take a, a second during one of the intermissions and point out Walter Gretzky. And he'd stand up and, 
and and uh, place waved everybody nuts. and place went nuts. They loved guy, Walt. Guy was never a leaf. Guy was never, never a leaf. Not one game of his life. Standing ovation. Yeah, and it's it's crazy, and that happened every night. And so with um with Walter, when I interviewed him, it was like he he said, "So when are you coming over?" And I said, "What do you mean?" And he said, "Well, when are you coming to the house?" <laughs> Because he brings people in on tours. Like, this is a very kind person who's oh, yeah. very gracious about the fact that, you know, you know, obviously Wayne had the career Wayne had, but his sons were pretty successful in hockey. Like, the fact that Brent played a game is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, that I think Brent was, was it Brent or one of the other ones was at Leaf Camp for a bit too. Uh, one of them, I think in the late 80s, was Brent. trying out for the Leafs. You know, the fact that they even got that far, that's a lot to be proud of. And, you know, obviously having the best hockey player of all time would come with a ton of stress, but he handled it all in stride. So, uh, unfortunately, as you get older, uh, sometimes, and you know, when you have some public profile, sometimes people can work their way into your orbit that aren't necessarily people that you can put your trust in. Now, according to Phil Perkins of CHCH News, he said, we've learned the ID of one of the accused in connection with the Walter Gretzky thefts slash sale of $630,000 worth of Wayne Gretzky memorabilia. So this would have been stuff probably in his house. 28 year old OPP, sorry, 28 year OPP vet and a close friend of the Gretzky's June Dobson of Brockville has been charged with fraud and breach of trust. She's been an OPP officer for 28 years. So that's provincial police, which is like state police, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So she was, uh, she had several roles with the OPP criminal investigations branch an instructor at the police college in Ontario, crime prevention and deputy director and commander. Uh, the OPP tells CHCH that Dobson is currently, uh, the detachment commander of the Grenville OPP. She is currently on unrelated leave. The charges against inspector June Dobson are not related to the larger theft investigation. So there's something more here during the initial investigation, police uncovered evidence unrelated to the initial investigation that separate individuals are believed to have committed fraud in, uh, involving the Gretzky memorabilia. A still unnamed 58 year old man in Oakville has been charged with theft and possession of stolen items. Now the greater story at large here, and this is what's important is that uh, according to Ken Campbell, a uh, friend of the show, Ken Campbell, um, <laughs> he, hey. the Gretzky family discovered over the summer that about $500,000 worth of Wayne Gretzky's memorabilia. So that would be in American dollars. Uh, and two suspects have been arrested. So the, 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 the memorabilia was stolen. Now, um, it's, it's kind of crazy how, how deep this goes back. But in August, the Gretzky family, and I'm quoting directly now, contacted police in Brantford to report that a number of pieces of Wayne's memorabilia had gone missing after being alerted by a family friend that there were some suspicious activity, a uh, su- suspicious Gretzky memorabilia flooding the market. Police soon learned that a number of items had been sold around Canada and in early December executed search warrants of five homes of people in Ontario and Alberta. They recovered game use sticks, hockey gloves, pants, sweaters, including his sweater from the 1997 All-Star Game in San Jose. And that's the one where Owen Nolan picked his goal, I think, and scored the hat trick. One of the best All-Star jerseys of all time. And a plaque in the purple. Yeah, it was cool. And a plaque commemorating him being named the NHL player of the year in 83, 84, when he was like right at his height. They also found one of a kind items. Yes. They also found evidence of another person who was believed to have committed fraud uh, that involved a Gretzky hockey stick. Both suspects have been known to the Gretzky family for quite some time and unknown to them have been accumulating items over the years. One source with knowledge of the situation said the woman who was charged allegedly contacted a memorabilia dealer offering to sell a stick from Wayne's childhood that she claimed had been given to her by Walter. The stick, which was reportedly purchased for $6,000, was tracked down by the authorities and the person who purchased it was questioned by police. So Walter Gretzky, by the way, is 82 years old. So... uh, and basically perhaps it should come as no surprise that the items totaling half a million dollars were taken in plain sight because Walter and they, and they mentioned this at least until COVID hit, if you were in the neighborhood in Brantford, chances are you could show up to Walter's door and get yourself a private tour of his house and permission to look at all the artifacts he'd saved over the years. That's crazy. You just, you just bring Such people a tragic story. Terrible. Like how dare Terrible. you? Um, Obviously, uh, you know, we don't know a heck of a lot more than that. I mean, that's what Sports Illustrated, uh, you know, slash Ken Campbell can tell us at this point. But it's a it's a 
It's an interesting, uh, I mean, it's, it's incredibly sad. Uh, my question is this, and I don't know how this works in investigation. So let's say the James Reimer mask that Steve wanted to buy, Steve purchased. Yeah, and there's but, one of those. But there's one, one of the, and there's one. And it turns out it was stolen from James Reimer's parents' house, which would be a tragic situation. Steve has paid $5,000 for this mask, which is an outrageous sum, but Steve would do it. Um, uh, if he had the $5,000 to spend on the mask, let's be honest. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> if the bat's flying out of my wallet. If Steve then has to hand that mask back, is Steve compensated by anyone for the money lost? So let's say you spend $80,000 on Wayne Gretzky's stick from when he scored like 300 goals that year when he was 12 years old. By the way, he had a year where he scored like 375 goals in a league. One season. Let's say you have that stick and that's worth 80 grand. Do you get that 80 grand back or is that just poof gone forever? How does that work? So the only loosely related example I can think of is, have you ever heard Dane Cook on Tom Segura's podcast talking about his half brother? Well, I know his half brother was his manager and ripped him off for millions, but I don't know how that went fascinating story so yeah I, I highly recommend you go listen to the whole clip but basically uh his brother rips him off for all this money and he basically like put cash in like tomato sauce jars and like put them in like the drywall and shit and so the police they did like a search warrant on this house they knocked the wall down they found the money and they called up Dane Cook to be like, hey, this money's coming back to you. Hmm. So I assume you get your money back. But the problem is, what if it's gone? Right. Yeah. Where does that go? Well, like, okay. Hey, man, I gave you $500,000 for this jersey. And it turns out it was fraud and you're in jail now. I want my uh, $500,000 back. Cool. Well, the problem is I spent it and I also have no means of making that back because I haven't stolen any jerseys recently. And also I'm in jail. Yeah. Like what, who pays that bill? If that, if, or do you just, are you just out? I think you might just be out. Fuck. Unless wow. they still have the money. You might just be out. Wow. That's crazy. That's yeah. Crazy. I'm on, I'm on Quora. How do you pronounce that site? You know that Quora? Quora? Quora thing you I get emails for all the time. Yeah. That yeah. I've never used once. I'm on that site, and some people have asked that specific question. What happens if you buy something that is later to have found out to be stolen? And the consensus uh, seems to be that, one, it depends on where you are, because the laws are different everywhere. Um, but if there was any uh, reasonable evidence that you purchased something and it could have been stolen, like say you made a Kijiji deal with some shady dude in, in an alley to buy an iPad, that there's a, a reasonable risk there that it could be stolen. And that once uh, the police find out that it is stolen, they take that possession from you as evidence. You have no right to get that money back. Ooh. So, so if, but- sorry. It also, if there was no um, reasonable evidence that, hey, this this seemed legit and the police are like, yeah, this seemed legit, they're still going to take that um, item in possession as evidence and you don't get the item anymore. Plus, it doesn't seem like they, they'd have to search for the money and then have the money and then the money becomes evidence. And then once the whole case is done, then you could file for the money after it leaves evidence. So that's years. Yeah. So, so unless yes, you're going you through can. like Sotheby's, which does these auctions, you're taking your chances mm -hmm. on big, big ticket items. Anyway, there are, um, you know, I have a few items that have certification, um, but I assume that's easy enough to forge. Oh yeah. I would think so. I would think so. I don't know. Wow. That's fucking crazy. Wow. Like just, it's beyond the fact that it's monstrous. Someone would do that to an old man. Yeah. Oh my, well, I, I think that's I obvious. Do we, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, but that's, like, that's the part that hit me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Or Walter Gretzky, Order of Canada, one of the greatest Canadians, you know, you're robbing an 80, 80 year old. Like, that's just shitty. It, it's extremely <laughs> shitty. But beyond that, how stupid are you to take one of a kind items, <laughs> sell them on the internet, <laughs> and like, it's especially if I don't know it's stolen. If I'm buying this and I'm a crazy enough collector and I've spent 
enough money on this. I'm telling the world I have it. Yeah. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Check out my Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, you see that? That's the all-star jersey. For, yeah, not only is it the year from Owen Nolan pointing at Dominic Hasek, it's also when McDonald's had those Muppets toys that had the same jersey. They're and sick, you got right? a crazy deal on it for some r random reason on the internet. I, oh. you see, I have this one-of-a-kind <laughs> plaque. You know, even the sticks, like, I'm sure there are many Gretzky childhood sticks out there because I'm sure he used many sticks as a child. How many of them were sold within the past six months? It just does not seem like, beyond the fact that it is a rather unkind crime, it seems like a fairly stupid one and easy to trace. Yes. Yeah. Not yeah, smart. I, crazy. Crazy. Um, I want to move on quickly just to a couple of things before we do the Bachelor bios. Ah! Eugene Melnick has started a blog, and it is boring. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> not much happening. You know, he's talking about stuff that you're like, okay, I can agree with that. Uh, so just to give that, you a, for instance, he, that's uh, the best news sends fans have received since they got the third overall pick. One of the, one of the featured posts from Eugene is what the global pandemic is teaching us when all else grinds to a halt, the health and well being of our children must be a primary focus. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Um, I, I, that seems, that seems pretty right. Uh, create, <laughs> creating a quantum shift in how we deal with concussions and brain injuries. So he's, so it's Eugene wanted to do talk about, uh, concussions and he did good. And that's the two blog entries we've got so far. Both came out on December 9th when he announced we have not had any since there have not been any games. Just you wait. Just saying now Ben's fan reaction, Eugene mm -hmm. on his blog. Now here, SFR. Let, let me throw a hypothetical out you, uh, out there at you. Uh, imagine he had this blog when Matt Cook sliced Eric Carlson's Achilles. Oh boy! Oh, imagine boy. if he had this blog after he created that controversy at the Sens outdoor game by saying, "Ah, oh, we can, you know, maybe move." Right. Imagine he had this blog during the Uber incident. Mm -hmm. Imagine he had this blog when Melnick out began. Folks, I don't think this is going to stay boring for long. <laughs> we will watch and we will see. I think, uh, I think the Canucks owner also has a blog, but he's like, he's just rah, 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 Canucks. It's not anything crazy. Yeah, he's just go team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like a sports fan, like the rest of us. Yeah. Um, so no big deal there. But we will be watching that very closely. Um, and lastly, Jesse. Yes. We must get to the Bachelor slash Bachelorette bios. Is it Bachelor or Bachelorette this time? It is the Bachelor. Ooh. Okay. So we have the ladies. All right. Now, so, to be anybody that's not a fan, Jesse, I'm just going to put this into context. The Bachelor seasons are always better. The Bachelorette ones with the dudes, mm. the dudes are always the same. <laughs> the women bring the personality. The men do not bring the personality. It's like, oh, Chad and Chad are mad at each other because, whoa, <laughs> one of them has blonde and one of them has brown hair. It's It's... It's the dumb fighting the dumb normally. Uh, but with the women's season, it, they're just far more interesting. There's so much, so much going on. The characters are deep and you really hate you. They figure one out that every time you hate her and she loves it. Got to have bad guys in the world. So we've got uh, the more interesting season to go through, which I'm very excited about. Jesse, go ahead. Sorry. So we do have to get to the Bachelor Bios, but there's one other uh, piece of news that we have to address. Because the show is called the Steve Dangle Podcast, but there are two other people on the show, right? I was right, unaware. Steve? There's myself, and then yeah. there's uh, Adam Wilde. Mm. Adam. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Steve, did you know that you and I are in the presence of Australia's, one of Australia's greatest tweeters? What? Uh, Nauru. You weren't aware mm. of that? <laughs> Naru, I wasn't. Well, <laughs> boy, do I have some news for you. I'm going to share my screen here. Give me one second. Oh, there we go. So my second desktop is being shared. I don't uh -huh. know if you can see that. Oh. Can you see that? Dress shoes. Yeah, I can see it. So I see Uggs. We're on, uh, we're on Buzz, BuzzFeed right now. Okay. An article called, Here are 55 of the best tweets by Australians in 2020. Wonderful. If we scroll down, there's one. Oh, that's pretty good. 
Yeah. Two, three, four. Whoa! What is this? A tw- one Adam Wild. Adam Wild from March twentieth. I'm not there yet, but m- one more week of isolation, and I will know every Wiggles song by heart. <laughs> so. A slap boy, boy, if only I could talk to my March 20th self. Ha, one more week. Ho, ho, ho. One Try more the week. year. Um, Adam, no offense, but <clears throat> is this the best Australia can do? <laughs> you know what? Nobody tells Saski she's going to be super pissed at me. <laughs> you know what's up with that? Why are you on the list of Australia's best is, tweets of 2020? Tweets about Australia or just Australians who are tweeting? No, because the Wiggles are the 55 are... best tweets by Australians. Really? Are the are the Wiggles not Australian? They are. Very. There you go. Except for the there is one Wiggle uh, who is American based. Oh, there's <laughs> one American <laughs> they Wiggle. They call him the, the Hawk. Because oh. that, that's his minute. Is yeah. And then there's a car. There's a. I love this song. Oh no. There's a. There's a. Um, there's a song. And if you don't have kids yet, you won't know this song. But when you do have kids and they reach about six months six months old and they they start to notice the TV, the Wiggles are great because it's none of the episodes make sense. They just go, here's a crazy thing, and then we're gonna break into song. And um, uh, they have this song called the Big Red Car. And then they point out things in the Big Red Car that they that they're that they're looking at. And one of them is a scarecrow. But they're like, it's a scarecrow. <laughs> and I just love the way they say scarecrow. What, what, scarecrow. What, here, one it's more a time. Scarecrow. Scarecrow. <laughs> uh, you know what? Actually, uh, you just you just reminded me of something. There is a podcast listener, I believe, mm-hmm. who I see every day now. Every day, because he is on a treehouse program that is a oh. kids' television program called Miss Persona. Oh, no. Is he a scarecrow on Miss Persona? <laughs> He's not a scarecrow, um, <laughs> but he is Miss Persona's friend, I believe. Oh, well, that's cool. I don't watch it for the plot. No offense, but well. uh, it's Kyle Dooley. And the reason I noticed him right away is one, I met him at a Blue Jays game. Two, uh, for all you uh, old heads out there on mm-hmm. YouTube, um, he was a member of Picnic Face. Oh, I remember Picnic Face. Picnic face. With they Mark had a very funny YouTube channel, Jesse, that got, they were like a comedy troupe out of Halifax. And I Halifax. used to go to like Yuck Yucks or whatever the comedy club in Halifax was. And we saw some of the members there and they were very funny. Uh, and then I think they had a comedy channel show up here for a bit, for a couple seasons. They and did. it was just off the wall, crazy shit. Like um, they didn't, they have a, um, they had like a thing where like, doesn't the guy like try to pick up a bear from his, like try to, there's Justin Fisher loves one of these sketches. And one of the sketches is like, he's hitting on a bear from his front patio or something like that. It's just bizarre shit. It's Uh, very Canadian, very off the wall. It's a very good show to watch in a certain state. You should be high. Um, So uh, yeah, anyway, that's legal here. So we can say that, but uh, anyway, long story short, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. Yeah. So hi, Kyle. Hi Kyle. I love watching you on a treehouse. Um, wow. So Jesse, uh, that's very interesting. I'm one of Australia's greatest tweeters this year. I feel accomplished. I've done something in 2020. Uh, shout out the, I'll get the name of the podcast listener who sent me that before the end of the show and I will shout them out. Okay. Um, now, are you ready for the bachelor bios? I am so ready. Now, I, th- how should we do this? Because we have a bachelor on the show. Mm-hmm. I was thinking Maybe we run down the list and then Adam at the end, you got to pick somebody to give your rose. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, and then Steve will be like your, um, who wants to be a millionaire at phone a friend guy throughout the whole thing. Jesse, so can he'll, you give my 50-50 or something? Yeah, yeah. He'll Maybe give you something. advice on the women as we go down them and then you pick one by the end. They're already all too good for me. Put it that way. <laughs> all of them I think we're say, about to discover. No, they're not. If the answer... <laughs> If the answer is, would they go for me? The answer is no. So let's just put that out there. Yes. They're all gorgeous. Ah, I'm sweaty and a single dad. (laughs) Why would I want to hang out with that guy who's got exposed brick behind him? That's right. That's a condo in Toronto. Are you guys ready? Go ahead. All right. So there's about, I think there's 25 contestants and I pared it down to like the best 10. So we'll run through them. This is uh, number one, Abigail, 25 Client financial manager from Beaverton, Oregon. 
Abigail is a beautiful soul from the Pacific Northwest who says that nothing makes her happier than enjoying a cold local microbrew on a beautiful Oregon day. That's the most Pacific Northwest thing I think I've ever heard. It is. She says she's looking for a man who will lift her up and make her feel like it's just the two of them in the whole wide world. Is she looking like physically lift her up? Uh, Spiritually. Okay, because I'm developing some hip issues, so I would prefer not to physically have to do that all the time. (laughs) Got to flex your core, lift from the ass. That's right. Yours, not hers. Um, You got to listen. Oh, no, we're not done yet, Steve. We oh, must we're not. hear oh, more. I got to finish the paragraph. How here. about I listen? <laughs> Good looks are definitely a plus, but Abigail says that oh, getting shit, to next. know someone <laughs> on a deeper level is far more important in a successful relationship. Abigail that- loves to spend her free time golfing with her grandparents. Abigail loves Calvin Harris because his beats slap. And Abigail's favorite way to approach a guy is by accidentally bumping into them. Oh, all right. It's Abigail. All right. So you keeping notes, Adam? <sighs> keeping notes. I like the idea of the Pacific Northwest. Um, got some family out there. Uh, it's a beautiful country. I've spent a lot of time in Idaho, uh, weirdly, because my mom went to university there. So I'm, you know, uh, my family's, I got family in Washington State. So um, go kooks. And, her her uh, maiden name is Potato Head. <laughs> Yo, man, there, it's, it's some of the most beautiful country I've ever seen. Ever, ever, ever seen. Montana, Oregon, Idaho, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So, okay. I'm interested. What do you guys think of the Calvin Harris beat slap comment? That's not wrong. Like, I love that song, Slide. That's a hell of a song. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. But, like, just Calvin Harris? Like, who's got Calvin Harris on the power rankings at the top? Right? Yeah, that's the weird one. Like, do you have a Calvin Harris poster on your bedroom wall? (laughs) I hope not. You know what I mean? Like, even if somebody said, if you, oh, I got tickets to Calvin Harris, I'd be like, yeah, I guess I'll go along. But if there's like Calvin Harris coming to Toronto, I'd be like, I guess, you know, I might have something else that night. I would go. I think it would be a fun show, like really fun. But is is Calvin Harris like, I, I can see if it was like Justin Bieber, Ariana that's Grande. That's subtle way of saying I golf with my grandparents, but also, uh, also want to go to Veld. Okay. <laughs> Or something like that. Oh, you know you what can, I mean? You can miss me with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Carolyn, 30, journalist from L.A. Skip. Mm. No. Those <laughs> <are> the- <laughs> <laughs> I just want to piss off all her friends. How all right. Are you? <laughs> Though she is fiercely independent, Carolyn is a serial monogamist who says she always has been the caretaker in her relationships. Now she is looking Uh for a man who will want to take care of her, but will also appreciate her for the self-sufficient woman she is. Hmm? Carolyn wants a bold man who won't be afraid to challenge her and call her out if she needs it. She needs someone who will appreciate her intensity and bring an equal amount of passion to, to the relationship. The ultimate date for Carolyn is something spontaneous that involves traveling because she says jumping into unfamiliar territory together is a great way to bond and get to know each other on a deeper level. Well, traveling costs money. So Carolyn's ultimate turnoff one. is a oh. man who spends all their time together uh, name dropping or bragging about his money. Instead, she hopes to find someone with a warm heart who is passionate about philanthropy. Hmm. I'm interested. I like okay. the passion part. I like, you know what? I like passionate people. I've always liked that. Steve, one of my best friends, passionate. I am. Right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, passion works. I love passion. I love passion usually couples with ambition. Sometimes, though, it can be a little cold. Like I've dated people in the past, um, like way in the past that were super ambitious and super passionate who also became extremely competitive in me. Um, And that's that can happen on both sides. And and so I I I would want to stay away from that. Uh, But I think, you know, I like I love the fact successful knows what she wants wants to be independent but like interdependent like we're we have our things but then we come together like that's there's a lot to like there adam would you let her look through your phone i would not let anyone look through my phone yeah what the hell is that no I one's that's gonna be a problem phone. do you lock your phone yes with a passcode 100%. i think that's gonna be a problem jesse read the first couple sentences again okay all right i'll go back though she is fiercely independent Carolyn is a serial monogamist who says she has always been the caretaker in her relationship. She has absolutely been cheated on. Oh. Oh. That's all I'm hearing. 
She's a serial monogamist. Okay, I won't cheat on you. Thanks. Um, and she's always been the caretaker in her relationship. She's been cheated on. There's baggage there for Over. sure. And it's going to come out episode three. You think so? Yeah. That's what, well, they never get into it right away. They, they plant the seeds, maybe. Mm. But then, you know, they're on their third straight episode of, hey, this person's had a glass of wine in their hand the whole time. And all of a sudden it starts to come out. Fair enough. Okay. All right. All I right. didn't catch that vibe. I didn't catch that vibe. So that'll be interesting to watch. Well, Adam, I don't I'm want uh, anyone. If I was going to be in a relationship, I don't need to be taken care of. I think you just want to be cared for. Does that make, does that make sense? So in, she's a caretaker. Okay. In all her relationships, <laughs> it's never been her. <laughs> it's always been her carrying the load. The serial. Ignoring that the common denominator is her. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making just wide sweeping judgments. That's what about this people. is about, right? That, that is, is 100% what it's about. It's about. <laughs> if I end up on the show, wrong, to who be... cares? There's nothing at stake. You're not on The Bachelor for nuance. <laughs> no, like, we want sweeping judgments about yeah. these people. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the point. That's why people watch. So, oh, I but mean, we believe in true love. Okay, you, well, the, do you... <laughs> you're watching The Bachelor, or, or sorry, The Bachelorette. The, the second the guy gets out of the car, you, you see his haircut, you're just dick <laughs> second the guy gets out of his car we're like this guy's an asshole yeah be the nicest person ever work at a soup kitchen donate 75 percent of his money dick all right no, Anna. no question though i i like the fact that this is a successful person who seems to know what she wants that's very attractive that's awesome mm -hmm. curious to know more anna the copywriter from chicago she's a small town girl living the big city life she was born and raised in a tiny town in Minnesota, and at an early age, her parents nicknamed her Hollywood, thanks to her affinity for chic scarves and oversized sunglasses. Bit bouche, okay. As much as she loved her childhood filled with Friday nights at the local bowling alley and family diners at Applebee, family dinners at Applebee's, this high school cheerleading captain knew she was meant for something bigger. Now she lives in Chicago and says she is living the life she has always envisioned for herself. She's looking for a man who will take her as the open book that she is, the good, the bad, and the ugly. She wants a man who wants to have a family just as much as she does and who will have no problem being open and honest in communication. Due oh. to her Gemini vibes, she needs someone who is a match for her intellect but will also always want to keep fun, keep life fun, sorry. Well, and her dream guy must enjoy doing puzzles with her. Anna is terrified of fish and obsessed with cheese. Uh, and she calls herself an experienced junkie and once convinced a, a pilot to let her fly the plane over bluffs of Minnesota for 15 so she's, minutes. She's charming then. <laughs> Anna dreams of writing screenplays for Hallmark movies. Oh, she sounds like a screenplay to a Hallmark movie. <laughs> Small town yeah. girl living in Chicago. But there's that guy that she once dated in high school and he's all attractive and works on a farm. And he's a millionaire, Christmas. but he's got to save the cookie factory. That's when she Congrats. goes back to her small Minnesota town. Kevin right. Diaz. <laughs> so first off, I don't, I don't stand a chance because obviously the guy that she uh, is, is bound to marry and kiss at the end of the movie is back in that small Minnesota town. But the other thing is, there's one reason and one reason alone why I don't think this could work already. She wants a family. And I just got a vasectomy. So that... <laughs> is out <laughs> and you would know that if you saw adam's instagram yeah. where he has an ice pack on his balls my mom Which was not great. a fan of that post by the way got a couple angry really why that. <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was funny good question steve it is funny dude <laughs> that was the and then your next instagram post is a sponsored post that begins with the nutcracker <laughs> adam adam not seen a theme is the best he's just he doesn't care he does not care I don't see the issue. I'm speaking about men's health. And you know what? Frankly, frankly, if you're done having children and you are single, you should probably say, listen, I'm going to be the one that takes charge here. And that's what I did. You know, it, we, we do put a lot on women when it comes to birth control. We do. So that's why I did it. Not well. And also because I don't want to have more kids and I don't want to be reliant on that. So, you know, take, if I don't want to have kids, I got to take responsibility for that. Anyway, so that's why it wouldn't work. This is Anna. Who, uh, what was the journalist's name, the previous one? Uh, the journalist, Carolyn. Carolyn. So, so Anna's out because we, she wants a family, and that's fair. All right. 
Anna, copywriter, Carolyn, journalist, mm -hmm. friends or enemies? Because there's always these little packs. Uh, interesting. I don't right? know. It sounds like they'd be friends because I think they'd be a little bit like opposite friends, you know? Both of them bring their strengths to the table. To the table. Interesting. Okay. Just a thought. Who knows? All right. All right. One other thing that's interesting about this season is that there are two Toronto girls. Oh. And we're going to get to the first one first, right okay. now. So Alana, she's a photographer, 26, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, they specify. Ah. Thank goodness. <laughs> Alana has always taken the road less traveled. Instead of taking the traditional college path after high school, Alana le leaned into her desire for adventure and moved to Europe where she enrolled in different programs throughout the continent. She calls this decision her greatest accomplishment yet. So she's because a dropout like I am. <laughs> there you That's go. Cool. We already like that. That's Good great. Uh, adventure is definitely a key component to Alana's life. Okay. The latest one being a move to Toronto completely on a whim. When Alana isn't off exploring the world, she loves spending her free time sipping bubbles at local wineries, painting or cooking, and, and is here with hopes of finding a man to share in the everyday pleasures of life. Alana says she is the queen of puns, and her dream job would be working as a restaurant critic for Michelin restaurants. There's only like 10 of those, though. You, know, you keep going to the same 10 Michelin star restaurants in the world. Like, not, there's not a lot. Not a lot of them. No, well, <laughs> Adam, they have to get new Michelin. So they go to all the four stars. Um, they upgrade them to five stars. And they do that every year to do the Michelin book. So she wants to be in the very exclusive club of people who rate for Michelin. That's a niche audience. Okay. That, that we've been doing a sports podcast for long enough that uh, for Alana, I would say strong regular season team. Can't she get it done in the playoffs? Good point. Right? So the strong, spontaneous adventure and everything, and I think she'll get deep into the show, but then we're going to start doing the parents thing, and we're going to do the – because that's when they go, can you settle down? And I think she's going to be sweating a little bit yeah. because hmm. she doesn't seem to be about that life. No. Hey, can she be... get it done in the playoffs? I like adventure, though. I like the adventurous part. I think that's cool and like good for her. Um, I think the Leafs are adventurous, Adam. Can sure. they get it done in the playoffs? Good point. Good point. <laughs> I'm always surprised, too, about how young these people are. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I didn't, I, I felt young at 26. I would not have wanted to get married at 26. I waited till I was in my 30s. Hey, screw you. Well, I, I mean, you did, but like <laughs> you were the first of our friends to get married. Most people are like 28, 29, 30, right? It's, I'm just, I'm always surprised. It's like 22. Hi, this is Kendall and I'm ready to get married. I'm like, are you really? I mean, you all fill your boots, but are you sure? It's a long time, said the divorce guy. <laughs> uh, anyway, Kimberly, 28, yep. Yep. airline recruiter from Seattle, okay. Washington. I'm in. Once let a woman from Minnesota fly a plane over the bluff. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Kimberly is the kind of woman who radiates joy and happiness everywhere she goes. She is carefree and would have no problem picking up her life and moving to a new town on a whim. Kimberly describes herself as funny, loyal, trustworthy, and will be the voice of reason and shoulder to cry on if need be. She values a healthy lifestyle and wants to find a man whose enthusiasm for staying fit aligns with hers. Kimberly always tries to keep it real and is not afraid to step away if her expectations aren't being met. She's looking for a grown man who will be passionate about his career while also supporting Kimberly in hers. The one thing Kimberly cannot make work under any circumstance is no people named Adam Wilde. I'm kidding. She says no cats. Kimberly isn't afraid of anything except for finding out that a guy she is into has a foot fetish. Moana is one of Kimberly's all-time favorite movies. Don't take Kimberly on a date to a cemetery because that's a hard pass for her. There's a lot of stuff on Kimberly that? there. Who is doing story there? Yeah. There must be he, somebody <laughs> must have done that, and that's coming out in the show. So, um every, every season there's one or two people who make it far and you have to constantly go to whoever you're watching it with and go, who is, what's her name again? <laughs> That's Kimberly. 
Well, I, I like, uh, she seems to have a lot to offer and that's great. But the one thing I will tell you about the way I swipe on Tinder and Hinge is, uh, not Tinder, sorry, Bumble, I'm not on Tinder, um, is uh, if somebody says, I just want my running partner at 8 a.m. on a Saturday, I'm fucking out. Yeah. There's no way. I'm not the I'm not the wake up early on a Saturday type uh, and and go work out. I will work out. I enjoy it, but I'm not like you know. There are people that are super type A and good for you. That's awesome. Just not going to be a match for me. I need my sleep. I need to relax. And I work mornings, so no thanks. And that's the thing. Like when you, I also like work. I, maybe I'm strange on this one. I don't know how you guys feel. I like working out alone. I like, you know, or like with a, a training partner or whatever, I just look at it like this is my time to kind of zone out and think about stuff. And I don't mind working out with a partner there sometimes, but sometimes I need my time. I'm an only child. I need that. So that's sort of my mm-hmm. Zen time where like it's sometimes you need like an hour. Like Steve, you, you, you and SL have been married for what? Six, seven years now? Six. Six years. You do need time apart. You need video game time. You need time to, I mean, you work out separately, right? And we've gotten lots of that since March. <laughs> this lots, is my point. Lots and lots. This is my time point. Apart. Yeah. So if if you're the wake up early on a Saturday morning, like seven a.m., let's go for a walk. Yeah. It got better when we had a kid, though. Yeah, I, I bet it did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, listen, we can weather anything because holy shit, throughout all for, this, we've seen really an sick. unbelievable amount of each other. Kimberly sounds like she's got it going on. So good for Kimberly. Mm-hmm. Hopefully All this right. guy's into the fitness thing too. Do you have a do you have a front runner? We're about halfway through. I think I liked I liked the first two. First two? Yeah. I like people yeah. from the Pacific Northwest most of the time anyway. Mm. Uh, so she seemed very nice. And then I really like the journalist from LA. Like you got some going on. I like that. You got your own thing. You don't need me. Uh, you know, you don't need you don't need anything to do with me. It's sort of like now again. I preface this with saying none of these girls would say yes to me. So let's just let's just get that off the table. But if That's we're talking about for telling us, we would have never known. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for telling us. I'm gonna say Carolyn. Carolyn, so far, yeah. Carolyn. That's the journalist, right? Yeah, that is. Yeah, the journalist. I think so too. Yeah. There's there's a there's a meaty story there. I think there's lots of tears, which is Passion. liquid gold for Passion. that show. Yeah, I'm All detecting right. yeah a lot of future tears. Let's see if any of these girls uh, can top Carolyn. So we got Amani. You're going to like this, Adam. She's a realtor. Ooh. 25. Ooh. Albuquerque, Ooh. New Mexico. Ooh. Amani is the first to admit that she isn't outwardly lovey-dovey kind of person. But that doesn't mean that her desire for love doesn't run deep. She describes herself as goofy, selfless, and sensitive. And while she hasn't had much luck finding love thus far, she is here hoping that meeting Matt can change that. Imani is looking for someone caring, driven, and to be her best friend. She's the kind of woman who would rather go to a sophisticated jazz bar over a baseball game and whose dream date consists of sharing a bottle of fine red wine and spending the night immersed in meaningful conversation. I could do she that. loves to cook and says that her favorite way to show her man how she feels is through an old-fashioned home-cooked meal. Imani says her turnoffs are emotionally uh, instability, physical instability, and financial instability. Really, instability of any kind. So if you are sick, please do not <laughs> swipe right. <laughs> She says she. Sorry, enjoys- I've got asthma, Amani. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> she enjoys throwing solo dance parties in her bedroom. When asked if she could be anyone else for a day, Amani says she would be herself because she is pretty cool. I like that confidence. That I like. Good for you. <laughs> I am the baseball game guy. So mm, that's yeah. probably out. I, she probably wouldn't want anything to do with me anyway. But if we're talking about if there's a potential here, I'm the, I'm the guy that likes to go to the game. I do like jazz and I would go to a jazz bar. But I, if we're talking Leaf Game or Jazz Bar, I'm picking Leaf Game every time. That's just who I am. As six-year marriage guy, you got to go to both there. You do. Oh, yeah. You, you got to go to both. Um, so it's going to be a – this is going to be a problem. It's if she would rather go to one than the other, I th- that's just called being a human being. Yeah. Um, but if you're uncompromising about it, I think you're going to have some issues. Yeah. Or not. You'll find a guy who doesn't like sports. <laughs> Lots of those. Yeah. 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 Well, so. yeah. Yeah. Um, Corinne, marketing manager from Palm Fret, Connecticut. I like that name, Corinne. Palm Fret, Connecticut. Never heard of it. 
but it's a nice area, her, I'm sure. Happy with her life in Connecticut, Corinne is ready to find someone that would be a great addition to her already wonderful world. Corinne comes from a big, loving family and does marketing for the family business, a high-end Italian restaurant. She strives to surround herself with positivity and says that she is at her very happiest sitting at the beach with the sun shining down her face. Mm. Corinne is looking for a man who will prioritize settling down over having a busy nightlife and partying. She Mm. wants someone who is serious about creating a life with her and who will match her unwavering loyalty. Her dream man will support her in both her personal and professional endeavors and will let her do the same for him saying that she always wants to water him so that he is constantly growing as a human son friend. Okay, Brian Fred has, sorry, go up, sorry, continue, sorry. Corinne loves Disney World and has been there more times than she can count. Corinne once snuck into an abandoned uh, insane asylum in the middle of the night. Before Corinne has kids, she wants to experience life living in New York City. Can I just say that's so much less of a red flag than Disney? Oh, oh yeah, the Disney is the biggest red flag for me. Yeah, yeah. The the uh, the the sneaking into the insane asylum that sounds fun. Uh, the um, the the Disney World thing is cool. Like I'm Everly is 18 months old. Um, my parents have a vacation place in just outside of Tampa. Um, so Disney is like you know, Orlando, I think is like an hour and a half away or something like that. So it's going to be really fun for Ev as she kind of grows up and goes through those magical years of like, Oh my God, it's really Snoopy. Um, and I get to go to star Wars land on top of that, which is sick, but like, you know, there is, there's like a, a healthy love of Disney, which I believe I have, <laughs> like you're a subscriber to Disney plus. And then you there enjoy is, the films. I know where this is going. and then there is Steven. <laughs> Stephen, what, what what is there? <laughs> there is, you know, singing Disney songs in the basement at the end of the night at a house party. <laughs> wow, Adam is calling out my wife. Hi, SL, <laughs> right now, and ooh, he is I'm right. This he is right. She's Adam gonna text right. me after this. I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> Well, Adam, you're assuming she listens to our show. Oh, that's true. And I'm here to tell you she doesn't. (laughs) But uh, no, she actually, you know what? She listens when it's not sports. Okay. Well, this is not sports. There you go. Well, I'm ready to be offended there, love. Yeah. I think, I I also think for, I'm not uprooting my life to go to Palm Fret, Connecticut, because there's like 5,000 people. I'm sure it's gorgeous. It actually looks beautiful. I'm looking at it on a thing. Are you really? You got it. But if you're, okay, if you're entering a national dating show, Mm -hmm. do you not think it's a little bit, a little bit much to say i'm staying like you you know <laughs> like very like funny you, you don't you know don't you want to compromise on that like it's almost <laughs> like the baseball game thing like can we yeah maybe we work together on this you know when i whenever i hear one of those northeastern states all i picture is christopher walken's home from wedding crashers <laughs> yes uh, there are all those states those little states in there pretending like they're different are all the same to me. Delaware. It's, uh, what We're is it? Delaware. Isn't it? I, don't, I don't even remember the state from that movie, brother. Crab cakes and football. That's what Connecticut does. I don't think it was Connecticut, but that's all I'm picturing. It'd be like Rhode Island, like Connecticut, Rhode Island, those, those types of like, you know, we, we are Maine. Yeah. You know, very much like the, it looks like the Kennedys, you know, like the big woolen sweaters and Sperry shoes and Brooks brothers for dinner. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. I know what you're saying. Well, her Colonial. family owns an, an Italian restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. High Ooh-wee. end. Ooh, wee, ooh. Adam, now, you, in you're going to have to meet all six of her brothers. Let me ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> Steven. <laughs> hey, you're going to have a great time meeting Gianluca, Giovanni, oh, no. Massimo, <laughs> all of them. You're going to have a great time. Now, let me ask you this. In and about six Tonys. 5,000 people. Is there room for a high-end Italian restaurant or are you the Italian restaurant and you just call yourself high-end? Yeah. Is this, has this restaurant been on Kitchen Nightmares? I don't know. (laughs) Has Gordon Ramsay been in this restaurant in disguise? Good question. Who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. Has Gordon Ramsay pretended to be a rugged firefighter in this restaurant? Is that what he, is that what he does now? He goes in under, undercover? Oh, Yeah. 
but oh. it's great because like he'll be <laughs> he'll be like there will be like a camera crew in the restaurant a man very <laughs> not subtly wearing makeup with like special guest star rob gronkowski who is an NFL player and huge. <laughs> and they'll be like, well, I don't know what's going on. Who is this man? I'd be in there with He's like there with like a Mr. Potato Head, like <laughs> sunglasses and the nose with the mustache. Yeah. I'd be I'd Whoa. be in that restaurant cutting into my raw chicken cutlet, going, wait a minute. That looks like Gordon Ramsay in disguise <laughs> and Rob Gronkowski specifically. I'm not even an NFL fan. No I know one, it's Rob Gronkowski. No one ever notices. Yeah. No, yeah. no one ever. Man, between that that caravan of six people who just walked in and ordered every item on the menu and the camera crew, I had no idea something was afoot. Wow. And the waiver I just signed. And the waiver yeah, right? I <laughs> to be on camera. <laughs> Yo, uh, one show you do have to watch is Bar Rescue. Mm-hmm. That is my favorite flipping show. It's so, so, so good. It's like, the, it's so, it's like the trashy version of Kitchen Nightmares. It's awesome. And John Taffer, uh, he just basically comes in and he goes, we're shutting it down. They're disgusting, these bars. And the then bartender's he, always like, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, uh, continue, Jess. Uh, we're going to do Toronto contestant number two. Very excited. Let's find out. Serena P, 22, publicist, Toronto, there Ontario, more than, There's more than one Serena. Yeah, Tor- there's 22. The, yeah, she's 22. She's not Ooh. the youngest. The youngest is 21. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. for as long as she can remember, Serena P has been a believer that no matter what your age is, when you know, you know. Serena has always led a disciplined lifestyle and she has, says she has never really taken the time to pursue true love. But now, this typically logical thinker is throwing her rule book out the window and is ready to meet the man of her dreams. Serena is looking to find a man who will enjoy spending quality time with her, whether they are having beers at a low-key bar or sitting courtside at a Toronto Raptors game. For her, it's all about having fun and growing in life together. The hell Serena- is this person? She getting court sides at the Raptors. <laughs> right? Okay, let's play a game. What part of Toronto? What do you mean? I'm Vaughan. thinking North York. Vaughn. Vaughn? That's not Toronto, though. Well, it's GTA. Or is it she is. saying... Do you think producers are like, no one knows where Mississauga is? You got to say course. Toronto. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. GTHA, man. Yeah. Sorry, Hamilton, but come on. She could definitely be from like Oakville. Yeah. I think Vaughn. Yeah, I think or Oakville. Vaughn. Yeah. Vaughn or, yeah. If you're if you're doing court sides at the game, you gotta have some money. And that's not coming from the east. And I'm from the east in Toronto. The beer thing <laughs> that's not courtside her... money in the east, let's be honest. The beer thing moved her west, the courtside thing moved her further west. Further west. Yeah. Yeah. Or north. Like or north. north and north north. I picked North York. Richmond Hill. Yeah. Even Richmond if she's from North money. York. Yeah. yeah. Woodbridge, big money houses in Wood- Woodbridge. Wood the bridge. Forest for Hill. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, I'll continue. Uh, Serena says she is chronically hangry. Um, she would love to have a pet chicken so she could have a pet and endlessly supply an uh, endless supply of eggs all in one. Nope. So she wants a backyard. <laughs> and uh, this chicken shit smells, by the way. No, thank you. How do you she, know that? I mean, it's shit on a farm. But... Oh, well, there you go. That's <laughs> she a good also needs a man who's willing to share his food. Uh, with her saying, if they don't let me taste their food, I don't know if the relationship could survive. You okay, can taste yep. the food. I yeah, don't mind that. No. Yeah, you no. wouldn't do that? No. You don't do that, Steve? No. Well, no, I would do that if I loved her. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. First date, get the fuck, get out of here. It's, it's my plate. My, You should have ordered fries. See, I think it's a, it's very endearing on the first date to do something like that. Cause it's sort of, you're showing an interest in someone. You are very, like little... you are barely above a stranger. Get your hand off my plate. I would never ask to, <laughs> but if they asked, I would say, yeah, no problem. Give it a shot. Whatever. You think it'd be kind of cute. I think it would. And I also think it shows that they're comfortable with you. If they asked, that's different. But if she does, if she just does the reach and helps herself. Oh, that's a problem. I might walk out of the restaurant right there, which is a lie because of course I'm finishing the food. Yeah. But I'd you're... be upset. I would be like quiet upset as in I'm not going to I'm not going to say anything now but wait till my friends hear about this. Oh. Can you believe? Oh. My yeah. my tumbler 
<laughs> Honestly, I think I think uh, I'm saying West End of the City seems like cool and got it together. But to say you've lived a disciplined life at 22, sure, that could be true. But to say you lived a life at 22, I how do you say this without sounding old as hell? Old. Uh, she yeah. just she she didn't have much to say. <laughs> She didn't you're, have. You're too young, bro. These <laughs> bios are supposed to be a resume of your life. Yeah. And she's like graduated high school, graduated university, bachelor. Yeah. And she, as someone who has written a resume where I was grasping at straws, talking about my high school play and shit. I'm getting vibes. Getting vibes there, Serena P. <laughs> well, give me an idea. Steve and I didn't start this show until. We were 24, 24, I think. Uh, 24. 25. Is it 25? No. Yeah, it was 24. Whatever, 24 or 25. Mid 20s. And and Jesse didn't join until he was at least that age, right, Jess? You were like 20. I think 24. I think 24. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. 24. Right? I mean, maybe. And that's that's just that journey. That's just that one part of our lives, right? So I, I think yeah. I you know. Good for you if you want to get married that young and if it works out and that's awesome. But it's it's certainly like it's it's a lot. It's a lot to take on at 22, at least emotionally where I was at. Um, we have two more. We're Let's go. 80, 29, bank marketing manager from Renton, Washington. I don't know if I'm saying yeah, that that's correctly. A, that's West Coast then. Yes. Washington, the state. Yeah. Not can, can America <laughs> knock that off? <laughs> Hey man, we had the Rough Riders and the Rough Riders in the seat. <laughs> that is so really much. That schedule. is so lower stakes. <laughs> that it, okay, we have, but we don't have Vancouver, British Columbia, and Vancouver, Saskatchewan. No, that's true. We do have a St. John and a St. John's, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, it's still not but, clear on where each of them are. To be honest, with you. one's New Brunswick, one's Newfoundland. That's St. It. John's is Newfoundland. St. John is New Brunswick. There you go. Wouldn't know. I know that because of hockey. <laughs> go ahead jesse katie knows exactly what she wants in a man and is done wasting her time on boys who won't live up to her expectations oh, is a witty also been cheated on oh, boy. <laughs> also been cheated on she oh, is a boy. witty storyteller who says when she finds someone worth committing to she is the most loving and committed partner anyone could ask for i'm a hundred percent right on i this. gave okay. you all yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I nailed it. Katie is daring and adventurous. While Katie is serious about finding her person, she needs a man who can laugh along with her, but is okay with laughing at her too when the moment calls for it. Katie is looking for a mature man who has ambitions to succeed in everything he does, both personally and professionally. Her dream man will be passionate about building a long-term life with her and will treat Katie as his equal in the relationship. Nothing turns her off more than someone who sits around playing video games all day or a man who tries to kiss her at the inopportune moment. It's all about creating the right vibe with Katie. Katie's idea wrong about the of a thing. fun date is going skinny dipping. Oh, Katie would love to host her own talk show one day. Oh. Katie once planned a dog flash mob that got a huge turnout. Okay. That's Katie. Well, a what? A dog, dog flash, flash mob. Is that? Got together. <laughs> you could. So Katie has Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she once started a group and a bunch of dog owners were like, let's get together and talk about our dogs. No, Which, by the it way, was a flash mob. So they must have done it like at a mall. And it was like, oh, oh, they all did a dance. Oh, my God. That sounds so fun. So at least Serena was 22. Yeah. Katie's 29. And that's oh not great. Jesse, third paragraph down there, there was something about that that I wanted to say. But I got to I got it. You got to jig my memory a little bit here. Third. Uh, her dream man will be passionate about building a long term life with her. Uh, no, treat like Katie that. is equal. Yeah. Uh, nothing turns her off more than someone who sits around playing video games all okay, day. Okay, yeah, that's a problem. Okay. Listen, yeah. <laughs> whatever the fuck I want to do, <laughs> like assuming that there's nothing to be done. Like I'm not I'm not I'm not the type of guy that's going to and 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 this goes for any partner, guy, girl, doesn't matter. Guy, girl, any gender that you are, okay? If somebody says, "I like to build Lego." And you love that person, then you fucking let them build the Lego. If they like to watch Netflix to unwind, then you fucking let them watch the Netflix, even if you don't want to watch it. You know why? 
because it's compromised. If you want to play video games to unwind, which is something personally I do, which for some reason, some people are super cool with and other people are like, yeah, I don't like that, it's stupid. Um, I think uh, you're an asshole. If, uh, honestly, I think you're an asshole. <laughs> You need to let your partner do no what the fuck they going. like to do before they met you. They don't just, you know what I mean? So if you're also not into 2020, that. like video games are not a children's toy anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. Video games have been around for like 40 years. The average gamer is in their 40s now. Right. So I just, I just, I have, I take particular issue with the video game thing because it's always people that are like, video games are stupid. No, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> oh my. Like, really? Honestly, honestly, with that shit. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't ever go into anyone's life and go and go, no, change your hobbies because I said so. Yeah. I am here, so you must change your hobbies. If, and, and I, what I would suggest for her is if she doesn't want to find a guy like that, then yeah, find a guy that's not interested in a PS5 right now. Fair, fair point. But I also think it's sort of a dickish thing where you're not going to like everything your partner does. You're not going to be thrilled about everything that they choose to find fun. You're just going to have to accept it. That's what a partnership is. Is okay. I haven't been single since I was 19. <laughs> is that not what online dating is for to literally in bullet points, paragraphs, put all that shit yes. so that you never have to encounter it. Yes. But you'd be surprised at how many people are like, I'm cool with it at the beginning. And then later oh. on, like, I'm not cool with it. And the liars. Uh, oh yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. I think, uh, listen, I, I, I want to respect the fact that, you know, there are people that I wouldn't want to be with somebody that had a problem with me playing video games. So oil and water there. Right. Right. But don't, like you would never be in discussions. Never. If that's in, if that's in your Bumble profile left, see you later. Uh, I'm, I'm not, we're not going there um, because I want to do, and also I just feel like as an adult, do whatever the fuck you want to do as long as it doesn't hurt anyone, mm. right? Like really, what, what argument is there against that? You know, if, you, if you've got the chores done, if you paid your bills, if you've done all those things and you're an adult, do what you want to do. Pretty simple. Adam, did this, has this ever come up? <laughs> not the video games thing, not really. No? Um, okay. with a, a like, a, like a, oh no, it's happened with some friends, and I'm like, Ugh, friends, not you, but like friends. I've had friends that I like not not judging me. me, but judging their girlfriends or boyfriends, judging them. Mm. Oh. You'd be surprised. Female gamers fucking get it from some of their boyfriends. It's crazy, and you're like, dude, I would die for someone to play video games with uh, me. Are you kidding? All I know. day. All day play video games with me. I would love I know. that. I'll break up my N64. We'll rip Mario Kart all day, drink some beers, eat some pizza. It'd be hilarious. I'd love it. I know two couples like that, and they just seem like the happiest people in the yes. world. <laughs> yes. My, me and my girlfriend played N64 on Saturday. It was awesome. I know three people. <laughs> I know three couples like that. We, play, uh, <laughs> we play Mario Kart. Oh, that's a great. That's, great, yeah. that's a great couple game. Oh, that's yeah. a perfect couple game. Yeah. Oh, my God. I well, love you, to, too. I'm trying to get her good at it. So if people come over, we can just dominate. It'll well, because be you guys are already really good at beer pong. Don't yeah. play beer pong against Jesse and Gabby, <laughs> Stephen, ever. If we're ever allowed to play beer pong again once COVID's over, dude, they're sharks. It's not fair. They come in like, they're like, yeah, you want to play some? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. And they just crush you because that's what they did in lockdown. They Jesse would finish up on the air and then they played beer pong and that was it. <laughs> no. Um, hey. <laughs> you're sharks. The two of you, you're sharks. It's immoral. We're, we're, that's we play a little. It's fun. <laughs> Asol and I were a good flip cup team for a while. You were that's, great. Yeah. We were really good. Really good. We got good. Yeah. Drank a lot. <laughs> I, I never uh I, 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 it's times like this. I wish I was good at sports. Like I was talking to the, the dangle Navy guys who I play video games with. And we talk about, we talk about how we were in like April and May of this past year. Like it was the last dance. We're like, mm -hmm. man, for that, for that time, for that, for that maybe 45, 50 day period, we were unbeatable. <laughs> Yeah, and that now we're just kind of guys where you guys were playing like every night, and then yeah. we played you with uh, Pete's team, and you almost made Div One and all that stuff. That's your last. No, dance. that's we pretty cool. Made Div One you, and when you stayed made Div there one. and won yeah. championships, and no, because we were good. Like we were like Div Four, Div Three, and then we had we practiced because we didn't want to lose to Pete, and then we were just 
like one day a week later, I'm like, are we just good? <laughs> like, are we just, and we fucking killed everybody. There you go. And now I, uh, I pl- I've been playing with them recently and I am a tremendous liability. <laughs> do you have 21? Yes, I do. Is you it like worth it? it? It's, it's not very different. Right. I enjoy kind of like it, the but... same thing with FIFA, right? It's sort of like you love it, you play it, you get the new one every time. I haven't done they they so they actually invest in the offline mode, but whoops, uh, I'm sure if I had more time, like I used to do like the the be a pro, the GM modes. I used to go crazy for all that, but I don't have time. I got you know, I got to wait for Leo to be asleep or X or yeah. Y. I'm really excited for him to learn video games. That'll be fun. You'll be playing Animal I'm, Crossing. I'm excited for the day that he beats you in video games. Oh, man. Because oh. every dad talks about that when their their kid surpasses them in sports or in video games. I remember the first time I beat an adult at Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey for N64. Oh. Big freaking man. day. 6-5 in OT. Doug Gilmore. Thank you very the, much. The funniest- Doug Gilmore on the Leafs. F- funniest meme I've seen recently is a dad walk. It's it's a meme. His kid, uh, this dad walks into his kid's room, and he's just like, "Are you winning, son?" And the kid's looking at his screen, and he's just designing the penis in cyberpunk. <laughs> 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 Why do we have a game where you can do that? Did you see the uh, somebody made a Mark Zuckerberg face, and it's exactly like no. Mark Zuckerberg's face in Cyberpunk? It's crazy. Uh, crazy. Somebody spent hours just trying to make Mark Zuckerberg. It's so it's so ridiculously it's good. Stupid. You know, stupid. throughout this conversation, I've had such a good time, and in the process, forgotten that contestant's name. Oh, that's okay. Oh, the last one we just did was uh, yeah. Katie. Okay, what's the last? May your one? hands never so, touch a rose. This is our final contestant. Uh-huh. This is Victoria, 27, okay. L.A. Now, I'm going to give you her job description, and then I'm going to read you the first line of her bio, and you're going to be like, swipe left. Oh, all right. Her job description, I, there's a reason I saved her for last. Her job is queen. Victoria So unemployed or, then. Oh, God. Victoria or Queen Victoria, as she likes to refer to herself. Yeah, that's sort of, sort of funny history joke. Like, has outgrown her once upon a time jet setter lifestyle, but not her sense of grandeur. Victoria has shifted focus towards entrepreneurship and has launched a few businesses in the health and beauty space. Victoria oh, no. knows. So Victoria yeah. has an Instagram. Okay. She has an Instagram. Good for Victoria you. knows she has a big personality and needs a strong man who can keep up, but who won't be controlling in any way, shape, or form. The top okay. things Victoria needs in a relationship are loyalty, honesty, and independence. Uh, spirituality play a huge role in Victoria's life, and to find someone who is also spiritual will be a huge plus for her. Victoria loves romance, and with her love language being physical touch, she hopes to find someone who appreciates that side of her. Victoria tr- truly has no filter, which she loves about herself, and plans to be Ooh. very forward in her pursuit of Matt. Victoria lives okay. for the perfect Aperol Spritz. Am I saying that? A- a- Aperol, Aperol, spritz. Aperol split, Spritz. It's a drink. It's a good one. The good light of drink. her life is Coco, her golden doodle. Steve. Okay. Victoria's oh, okay. biggest turnoff is a man who can't keep his room clean. What do we think? I one of my biggest turnoffs with people in general. It doesn't have to be. I know I'm serious. One of my but biggest no, that's a good start. is is people that uh, are like, yo, whatever. I'm honest, and they're just a fucking asshole. <laughs> um, and you know what I'm talking about, right? And a lot of those people are yes. like, I'm un- I'm unfiltered. I'm dangerous. You're not. You're just an asshole. Um, there are ways to. Uh, and so, so I'm not saying this is her, but when I, when I see people are like, I live the unfiltered life and like, good for you, live your authentic self, do your thing. But for me personally, I don't want to be around a person that, that blurts shit out, hurts people's feelings and then goes, Oh, I'm sorry. I guess, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Like, it's sort of, you know, cause we, we, we've been known to do that a little bit, you know, in, in broadcasting it happens, you do say stuff that's going to hurt people's feelings and you, you know, never intended. But when you're talking about like, I don't want to be worried at a dinner party about what shit is going to come out of your mouth um, because, like, it sort of just puts me on edge. You know what I mean? That reminds me of Christine from Selling Sunset. 
Yeah. You know, the type of person oh. where I was like, I'm going to be a mean person. And it's not I've decided my fault. To be, I've decided to be horrible tonight and you're all going to have to deal with it. Yeah. That's not, that to me is not endearing. I'm going to hold I, this I, party hostage. Yes. <laughs> right. There it is. There it is. So assuming that if she lives like an unfiltered life and she tells you, tells you what she thinks and it's, uh, uh, and that's, and that's her honest truth. That's cool. But as long as you're not an asshole about it, you know what I mean? Cause there is like, there is that line. Do you know what I'm Everyone saying? Everyone pay attention to me or your good time gets it. Any, yeah. <laughs> Any gender can, can be p- capable of that. And I just feel like it's sort of one of those things where I always watch out for that. It's like, I like, I do like politeness. I do. Maybe I'm old school that way, but I'm pretty polite most of the time. And except for, you know, when I post pictures of my balls iced on, uh, on Instagram after, but really, you know, there was a deeper message there. Uh, it's funny. I love that you did that, by the way, Adam's such a G for doing that. And I just think, I I just think I would watch out for anybody that like, for me personally, I would watch out for anybody that'd be like, I'm unfiltered. I I don't care what people think of me. Yeah, you do. You do. Also the, I don't like a man who's controlling. What, who the, who does? Hi, I'm looking for a legitimate psychopath who won't (laughs) let me talk to my family. Like who is looking for that? No, you just don't want to be told anything. You don't want to be called out for being a prick. Yeah. When you're holding the dinner party hostage. Because you like attention. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm going to be a dick. Amanda but or don't whatever you your talk name to is. me about how I'm being a dick. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah. that doesn't mean it has oh, to be her. That doesn't mean it's her. You know, you know, when you flipped the whole table, it really ruined the vibe. <laughs> wow, you're so controlling. <laughs> I We're hyper focusing and drawing a ton of conclusions on one line of one bio. That's what this know. is about. That's what I know. Don't but I feel bad from the whole premise. There's going to be someone in my DMs going, I can't believe that you would stereotype people like that. And obviously I'm not. I'm just and saying. there's going to be thousands of people who aren't. Yeah, that's true. Who enjoyed the show. I'm just saying. All I'm saying is, listen, I, these are the things I watch out for. However, read, um, Jesse, read the third line in again. Sorry. Third line in was, um, Victoria has shifted focus uh, towards entrepreneurship and has launched a few businesses in health and beauty space, in the health and beauty space. Mm-hmm. That one? Well, listen, anybody who's an entrepreneur, you have my internal respect. I love that. I think that's so cool. And I'm so, attra- that's the kind of shit where I'm like, now I'm attracted, now I'm it interested. It sounds like what Steve said. You think that Instagram is, is Instagram pyramid scheme being oh, an God. entrepreneur? What? Oh, come on. Online we don't coin. know that. What no, online coin gets... is she selling? Guys, we all make some money off Instagram too. We cannot sit here and, and get, throw stones at glass houses. We're not doing pyramid scheme stuff. We're not selling fit tea, but we I'm all do sponsored posts. All of us. I don't need to invest in BizCoin, you know? That, no, I and just... we don't use promo codes. I get that. I totally get that. Like, we, we try to stay away from all of that stuff when it comes to our ads. <laughs> we really do. But it's, I mean, if she's an entrepreneur and it's more yes. than just, hey, invest in this thing and here's my butt, um, <laughs> cool. Like, good for you. Like, that's awesome. Also, if you're making also, money that way. Yo, if you're making money with your butt, God, you, man. Straight yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, no one's offered me any money for mine. Listen, here's my I butt. I did get is a fine. cameo request the... for feed picks, but yeah. that's <laughs> besides the point. Here's my butt is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the here's my butt and here's this tea that objectively doesn't work and is you're selling a fake product. That I have a problem with. Was, uh, Fair? I'm wild saying that. I, uh, I do not know. Okay, Steve will sell you fit tea then. Steve can be the one who will I absolutely will sell you fit tea. <laughs> look at look at the the sculpted from marble body that Steve has from drinking this tea. I am a Greek god. How dare you? Me and Nick Kiprios. Your Italian family's gonna be very upset that you said you're a Greek god. Yeah, I, yeah wrong Mediterranean country. That's right. That talks with its hands. <laughs> I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, well, listen, it's you know what? Uh, if I were to give a rose to anybody. It's got to be one of the first two. I was most impressed with them. And I think I'm going to give it to the journalist in LA. I I like the journalist. I like passion. You live a life without passion. It's not a fun life. So I'm I'm liking that she likes passion. Now, Adam and I have to have a boxing match because I also (laughs) would give her the rose. Whoa. And we could hold it in LA Uh where Shithead McGillicuddy can promote it. Yeah, because he lives in Calabasas, right? There you go. We've uh, that's our life. 
right there for the next two years. I'm enjoying it. Let's go. I now understand why the Paul brothers were mocking Evander Kane so much. Why were they? They had Floyd Mayweather in their back pocket. Oh, yeah. Who cares about a damn hockey player if you have the biggest boxer of all time? That's what I said. Who cares? It's just an NHL player. They uh, they pulled that out of nowhere. Well, and, and they, also like, uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather. Wh- when was the last time his name was in the news before this? Last time he fought. When he fought the no, when he fought the, it was like a sixteen-year-old martial artist in Japan. Yes, but he that made no headlines before. until afterward. Like there was yeah. no fanfare yeah. leading up to that. Maybe in Japan, but not over here. You know what I noticed is very soon after the Jake Paul, Flo- uh, sorry, Lo- is it Logan? Paul? Logan, Logan's Logan fighting Paul. Floyd. So the, the guy who has literally never won a boxing match before taking on Floyd Mayweather. Um, shortly after that was announced, uh, I checked Cameo, and who do I see? Available for the cool price of $999, Floyd Mayweather. Oh, well, it sounds like Floyd might have spent Floyd's money. He lives a life where there's a lot of going out, so he's got to have a lot coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Floyd yes. Floyd Mayweather, the way he spends money, like I feel like a 30 for 30 about Floyd being like MC Hammer broke. You know what I mean? Like it's just like I spent all this money and that's the whole documentary is how much money he spent. Do you know what I'm saying? He makes a hundred million dollars in a fight, and and like I he I mean take another one. Yeah, like ooh ooh, I worry about that one. Worry about that one. Yeah, you gotta hope someone's putting some money away there. Um, also the didn't they one of them didn't the one of the Paul brothers uh, challenge Conor McGregor yesterday? Yeah, Jake Paul, and he also drove up to another mixed martial artist on the street, threw something at him, called him the p word, and then drove away. Toilet paper he threw at him, and that's uh, paper. McGregor's. I think his trainer when he's here in the oh, states. Oh, yeah. you know, you know, I've I've watched a Muhammad Ali uh, documentary, and I and I remember when he drove up to Joe Frazier and then yelled a bunch of things at him, and then frantically told his driver to leave fast. <laughs> I hate these guys. <laughs> That's the point. The world needs bad guys. These are the bad guys. Oh, I guess. Who they're decides playing the role that they're that? They're playing the role perfectly. They're out batting Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor was sort of a bad guy you could root for. The world needs bad guys. For a while. Yeah, for a while. And then, okay, like, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now I'm like, now the, the what we're rooting for is an abundance of punches. Yeah, 100%. Both ways. Anyway. I'm going to watch it if it happens. I probably would too. I said before I wouldn't watch that, but now I'm starting to get interested. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've done more shameful shit than that for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Paying money, pay-per-view money to watch those losers. Um, I spent money on worse things. I have, (laughs) you know, honest. (laughs) I don't want to dive deeper into this conversation. No, no, we don't have time. We must go. (laughs) That was that hesitation. <laughs> no. Oh, like you guys have it. Fuck. Come on. Zelly <laughs> so oh. and I are flawless. Anyway, well, listen, we, we love you. Thank you for the extremely ridiculously long episode and hanging in there for it. And uh, we will talk to you. Uh, we think next week. We haven't discussed it yet. We'll figure it out. You'll Bye. find out on Twitter. We love you. Bye-bye. Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.